Ball Valley. All Valley Rooter. Jared LaBarba. Friend of the show. Childhood friend. Never again. Studios official plumber. 24-hour emergency services. 610-762-1656. That's 610-762-1656. They charge by the job, not by the hour, and they are 100% fully insured. They have free estimates. They also do installation and repair. They have a, a list, a list of things. I can't go over them all on here, but you can find them at allvalleyrooter.net. All of Jared's services are on there. It's a beautiful website. You can contact him through that website. You can find out how to do you know, emergency services. Where should I call? Who should I contact? You can get all that there at allvalleyrooter.net. Free estimates, fully insured. Jared LaBarba. Check him out. Banco. Banco Beverage. Proudly serving the Lehigh Valley for over 80 years. It's 80 years. Say it with me. 80 years. It's a long time. Over 30 plus breweries distributed, including Miller, Yingling, Pabst, Guinness, Heineken, plus a generous variety of imported and specialty brands. They are located at Crackersport Road in Allentown, PA. Can't get any more local than that, Lehigh Valley. Banco Beverage is locally owned, operated since 1933. They have an exceptional team of staff dedicated to making their customers happy. If you're interested in having Banco be your purveyor for whatever bar or establishment you own, you can go to www.bancobeverage.com. I have the information in the ads as well. And I want to thank Banco for coming on and being a sponsor. Myself and Tony are working on some projects and we are going to be bringing some really cool content as well as uh, Banco is going to be providing for a lot of the things that we do event wise. So uh, thank you, Banco, again. Thank you, Tony. And check out Banco Beverage. <laughs> Giacomo's, Giacomo's Italian market. What an awesome relationship that has blossomed between Never Again Studio and Giacomo's Italian market. We've been working with them with Studio Kitchen. Um, we've been doing their Italian sausage and going to pop-ups with them. I love Sal. I love all the guys over there. It's always awesome collaborating. And uh, you should go check them out. They got specialty Italian items. They're famous for the cheesesteak, the sausage. I can't even list everything because everything over there on that menu is fantastic. It's a home run. They are in Easton, uh, PA, 700 Cattell Street. That's 700 Cattell Street in Easton, PA. They are over by College Hill. It's a dope area to check out. You need to go there. They got plenty of uh, inside seating. Um, they got all kinds of specialty Italian things off to the side, a pasta, vodka sauce. I usually just go there because I'm not making it as good as Sal. So I pick up my vodka sauce and, you know, I say what's up. We got some oils and all kinds of different things. But uh, I can't say nothing but positive things over at Giacomo's. If you know them, you know them. If you don't know them, you're crazy and you need to get over there. That's 700 Cattell Street in Easton. That's Giacomo's Italian Market. Tell Sal what's up. <laughs> The Curious Plantaholic, located in Nazareth and Clinton, New Jersey. Uh, the Nazareth location was opened first, and uh, I met Jenny. We immediately hit it off. Uh, I knew we would start working on projects. She is the energy and the breath of fresh air that Nazareth needs. Uh, I started buying plants off of her, went down a rabbit hole. Now I got a bunch of plants I got to take care of. I'm trying my hardest. People are helping me. Um, what an awesome shop for plants, retail. The energy in there is amazing. The employees in there are amazing. Uh, it's a plant and supply store focused on connecting with local communities and boy do they do a, a fantastic job at that um i can't say enough about these guys you need to go to their locations and check them out but they also have plants for sale online it's a curious and right now they have two locations which is nazareth and the other one is clinton new jersey please check them out and you can get more information at curious i'm going to be working with jenny on some other projects as well so you will see us kind of creating a vibe and some things going on in nazareth we're really going to help kind of revitalize and get some things going on in Nazareth. So if you want to, please check out the Curious Planaholics in Nazareth. Support local, support us. They support the podcast. Thank you so much for coming on as a sponsor. Good 
We are live. We're not live. But uh, what up? It's Big Uncle Zach down here with Mike Fowerbach. What's up, doggy? It, boom, up, doggy? the switcher is working. Working the switchies. We got uh, whiskey and gingers going. And this is, is this the exact official last podcast here I have in one the more, I have one more Friday. Oh, we got one more Friday. Okay, so... Then that's pretty much it. So second to last podcast in the studio. Yeah. How do you feel about it? We were already talking about it before. Obviously, we started recording, but um, it's yeah, time it's to kind of crazy. Yeah. I, I mean, it's uh, it's bittersweet. Um, if I wouldn't have had a little kick in the ass, and like um, you know, the landlord was like, "Hey, a bakery wants to go in." Yeah. And we want the bottom. Um. So I was just kind of like. It's really annoying when someone's upstairs. Uh, I'm very grateful that there hasn't been a lot of people upstairs. Um, but it's it's been a minute since I've been wanting to get out of here. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to grow any further than staying down here. But I mean, this whole thing was built from here. I mean, this is where uh, the Tiger King clips from yeah, Doggy. That's totally true. That, that was crazy, <laughs> um, dude. Yeah, I still can't believe we made it onto Tiger King. That was kind of wild when it came up. I think was I watching that at home and it came through and I was like, I "JM called yeah. me," and I was like, "What the?" Like I think I saw it and like I was like, "Wait, what? Was that the podcast?" Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Wow, holy shit!" It was weird. Yeah, and you know everybody that has ever seen this or sees my podcast, they always every time I do one and we post it up, people always want to, yo, let me come through to your studio. I'm like, it's not my studio, like you know what I mean. So I always have to explain it to them and everything like that. They're like, damn, that shit is sick, and it's always something I've I've always wanted. I mean, I met, I had a podcast, uh, the Finishers podcast, and I think I started that. You you were already doing the podcast. We were, yeah. And I will confidently say this now because everybody starts a podcast and they don't keep doing it. When I was started podcasting out of my apartment, the only other the only other serious group of guys doing a podcast that wanted to be on the same level as a Joe Rogan, because there wasn't a lot of those podcasts right. out then at exactly. that time. Yeah, true. So there wasn't really anyone doing it super high level. And then when you guys came in I met you guys through Dan because we did a cryo, we did a cryo episode with Dan, and because of that episode, we met you guys. And you guys needed a space to, because it wasn't even video. You guys were getting Eddie Bravo via phone, calling in, yeah, yeah. And I think like you guys gave me like fifty bucks, yeah. And I was like editing something in the back because at the original space was dope because there was a window, yeah. I remember because that because it place, was like yeah. a hallway, but then they built it into a thing, so it mm -hmm. was almost looked like a recording studio. Um, but at that time, and and I, it's not even in my opinion, there was only two people doing podcasting seriously to go in a direction to make money or to grow a, a brand, and it was the two of us. Yeah, it was what you guys were doing in, in in Dan's basement and what we were doing at that studio. And then when we combined, is in my opinion when that was my favorite thing to do because you already were podcast. Yeah. I was still having to tell people what podcasts were. Yeah. It was still telling guests what, the, what it was going to be. You had to coach people about an interview. Now yeah, people come on and they try and act differently than right. they are. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Which is why I'm moving forward. <laughs> that is true. They're like, try to put on a total different front when they're on the podcast. But yeah. So, um, what happened was back in the day, I remember we were doing it at Ross's too, for a while, Dan's basement, we did a couple on the road. Um, uh, what's his name? I think he was actually on your podcast, uh, Toad. We used to call him Toad. Uh, his name's actually Andrew Tomasino. And uh, he was Dan's brother's friend. Uh, Dan's brother, Mikey, it was his friend. And uh, Toad ran the podcast, I think, first. And then eventually Ross took it over. So that was pretty that was pretty cool. Like Toad, I think it was might have been Toad's idea, to be honest with you. Um, he might have been like, you should do a podcast or something. I was like, that was my Toad impression. But I was like, <laughs> he really was on good. your podcast, wasn't he? Uh, I don't remember. I think he was. Maybe he was on something. Um, I forget. But anyways, he started doing it. And I think he just had like a little recorder thing he would bring. Yeah. And set it up and we would just record it like that. So it was pretty cool. And then eventually Ross took it up a notch because he had a one yeah. Of these I, I just remember Ross yeah. would um, Ross was so far ahead of everyone. It was so hard to get like Jesse knew audio, but when we got into video, 
There were so many different people I was just trying to work with, and it was just a nightmare. Yeah. A nightmare. Because then it was like, I remember a couple of guys came on, and like they brought their own mics, and I was like, well, I don't need a fifth host. Uh, I didn't. We didn't even know what we were doing, but I just knew everyone was stepping all over each other. I, me- I remember when Carmelo came in. It was like Carmelo, and he brought Mickey, because Mickey wasn't in the UFC yet, and he wanted him to get um, used to doing media. Mm-hmm. So he was trying to get him to do as many podcasts as he can. But it was like that entire team came on, and I remember asking Jesse, I'm like, can we run 11 mics? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah. Yeah, that's insane. He actually, uh, Mickey Gall actually did our podcast, too. Yeah. Yeah. Mickey and uh, Chris Cortalo did. Yeah, it was Chris that, yeah. Cortalo, another, yeah. uh, like, uh, I say this because that's how he kind of carried himself. It was like a good looking guy um, who always had like his hair done, but he was like, you know, like when uh, GSP and. Uh, oh, yeah, that's. Uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, the other dude from Canada. Yep. Rory McDonald, like, carried yeah. themselves all like this swaggy. Is, um, I can't. Uh, I think he's still fighting. No, uh, uh, Ronnie Levine. Yes. Yeah, Ronnie. Yeah. Uh, is he still doing stuff? Um, he did do an MMA fight yeah. uh, lately. I don't know what he's been up to, to be honest. I'd have yeah. to look him up. But I mean, I haven't seen any of those guys since uh, they came on. I mean, the show was yeah. audio back yeah. then. Yeah, Ronnie's a good kid too. He's got a, he always had a lot of potential and just a re, you know really wanting to learn. Yeah, it was Ronnie. Be, yeah, those two, Carmelo, and then I think they just brought two friends. Randos, yeah. yeah. Everybody's got like your rando guy. On yeah, the we're team. like, oh, we'll like, mic yeah. them up. Yeah, mic up these two rando guys too. Yeah. That are just kind of chilling in the back, but uh, we have. They're uh, gonna breathe into the mic yeah. the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> or like uh, one time we did a conspiracy podcast where we had Mike Ortiz and might have been like Padilla or somebody. Like we had a bunch of guys come over and we're like, we're, or might might have been Gabe and we're like, we're doing the podcast, and uh, it was just like. Like same thing. Like Ross set up six mics, and it was just us screaming over each other the whole yeah. time about. That's what you do in the beginning, and then and if you like, start drinking, it's yeah. ten times worse. Oh yeah, worse. exactly. Yeah, you can have one drink; it's not too bad. But if you start going like insane with it, we had it we, getting, we like, created wild, a yeah. separate show. I mean, there were so many different shows that we did here. It was this show, and then the second show I created uh, with my buddy Josh and Corey uh was uh JCE, and it was our sports show. And mm-hmm. then I started rotating people onto that, and then after that. Um, what the hell else did we do? We then we did. Um, I think it was like then after we did that is when we started producing your shows, which was like, um, now we go and then now mm-hmm. we go, went and then um and then we went to uh Zach's corner because yeah, yeah. Zach's corner developed out of now we go because yeah. you just started rocking stuff solo and then I remember I did uh therapeutic dolphins with my friend Kara and then we did uh then we started getting. That show was so much fun. I just yeah. beat her up the whole time. And she, she's just like one of those friends who just like, I can lay into her as hard as I can and she just thinks it's funny. Uh, and she has this terrible laugh. Uh, I was talking to her today and I'm like, how cool is it that we got to do that? And then the other one was uh, we started doing off the rails because mm-hmm. we just would get fucked up. And then I'd be like, all right, if we're going to get fucked up. Let's because guests would come on and they'd be like, oh, let's come back on. And I'd be like, we'll come back on and we'll, we'll get drunk. And then that's how off the rails started. So you had another lane mm-hmm. where the get, ga- you know, it's like protect our parks yeah. and that shit where well, uh, you got a bunch of different things. Like you can't always box yourself into one thing. You also yeah, also yeah. like from my standpoint of like editing and producing and mm-hmm. running the show and doing all of this, um, you know, I've, I've had to throw shows out because of people were fucked up. Yeah. Hey, man, I shouldn't have said any of that. Yeah. And I was like, no. We, you have a career. Yeah, I put I out, don't. <laughs> I put out anything that I've said. I've never held back one podcast of mine. So that thankfully that's just because I think yeah. I'm smart in the fact that when I know I'm about to come on and do the podcast, like I choose my words carefully. Like I, I've not that I haven't been flagged on YouTube for threatening uh, the president or something like that, but or saying something like that's what that's what it accused me of. So I just deleted it. But like. <clears throat> Yeah, I didn't realize I had flags. Yeah. And then the other day, I, like, I've some flags. I saw it, and it was all—it was all from Now We Go. Yeah, <laughs> like it was <laughs> anything I'm flagged from is from that show. But, yeah, well, um, I mean, sometimes you got to get flagged. You know, it was it's, a different time then, man. Uh, we were angry. Yeah, I was definitely. Oh my god, bro! I, during COVID times, I don't even like to think about it because of just all the things that you, we went through. Just you know, shutting your business down and like. It's just funny though, all that stuff that went down, like people, I would love to go back because there were people that were like sending me like, 
you know, messages and saying, what you're doing is wrong. You can't open your school and everything like that. And it was just, it was wild. I would love to call those people back and be like, hey, do you remember when you said this? You 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 were always posting stuff from the beginning like, hey, this isn't right. Yeah. Uh, And I always still enjoy when you still do that because you're like, hey, remember? Remember, I love when people like post that stuff and they're like, hey, remember two years ago when they forced us to wear masks yeah. and like had to wait outside of grocery stores? It makes no sense. Yeah. Sometimes because like, you know, everybody just wants to forget about it and I'll have to remind people that I'll be like, hey, remember when we used to eat outside, but it was actually inside and you guys were cool with that? Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, like, like when it, there was so much, and I remember like yelling, like this doesn't make sense that like when when they started like saying like oh you can eat out but it's in a shed outside and i remember saying to my mom like that doesn't make sense you're yeah. outside going back what inside what are we talking about and then my mom's like yeah i just don't know and i'm like i fucking do it yeah, doesn't matter I do. it doesn't yeah. matter yeah and like people how about people um like uh spraying their groceries down with yeah like, you know what i mean like i i, I, I felt bad because i was giving my parents shit the whole time but i remember that she's like look your brother sprayed our groceries and we can't open them for 48 hours i'm like i'm drinking out of a shoe down here yeah. with tim i'm fine <laughs> yeah <I know. laughs> we're well, doing that, shoeies <laughs> eddie bravo used to say that too and it was a it was a smart thing when he said is it's not not a smart thing but i mean it's it makes sense when you think about it like we were all still doing jujitsu so like and people definitely got sick and i was sick at one point so i mean you know did i have it i don't know i'm not i didn't do any of the tests so i mean i feel like if people would have been like if it would have been as bad as they were saying it was like they we people we known would have died you know what i mean people we've known would have been like in jujitsu and then just dropped dead you know and that didn't happen obviously were there older people like sure i mean anybody that passed away from something is terrible you know what i mean but were there older people more affected by it a hundred percent like could we have went back to work though a hundred percent. And um, I just saw Dr. Phil was taking mad shit because he was on The View. He, yo, did he, you see he that? crushed them on The View. Yeah, I know. I did. See, yeah. I do see He's those. starting his own network. Yeah, I love seeing the, uh, that is one thing I'll get into a YouTube hole on liberal takedowns when like crazy, like nutbag, you know, hen house liberal. <laughs> we're yeah. going to tell this to Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil just like, is yeah, like, he look, can, they, he went on take that. this. Yeah, he went on that kind of uh i think he went on to promote his thing yeah and then they get into because what they'll do on that show from me seeing clips is like they'll like push you into a corner Mm -hmm. and then they just kind of get you to be like yep because you're uncomfortable about talking about it but if it's somebody who wants to box their way out uh it's usually a really good clip of somebody being like fuck you yeah exactly somebody else lit them up and i forget who it was it was um coleman hughes is another guy he's like a um you know uh conservative i guess he's not really conservative he's like a norm podcast mcdonald guy. went on there oh my god them oh my god yeah norm mcdonald was the most classic though yeah. when he's talking about uh i posted that one up too and they're like well who do you think's gonna win the presidency he's like well he's like if the left doesn't steal it again then yeah I don't know. yeah <laughs> he he really creamed them though he was talking about that was the old old one when he's talking about bill clinton is out the one you saw when he was talking about Bill Clinton was a murderer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the Clintons will murder you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they don't and know what they're to just say. Like, uh, uh, yeah. Norm, yeah. uh, you're supposed to be funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They kept yeah. saying that. Like, when are you going to be funny? Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. That just. Fuck dude, that show. View, How's that I show mean, still on? I mean, because it gets. The only reason it's still on is because the Democrat National Party is probably paying to have it still on TV. Yeah. It's just like a propaganda wing for, you know, the left. Really. I mean, those people on there, they say the most insane things. There was a clip going around the Kelly other week. Kelly Osborne was so good. I don't even remember her being on. I just know the of what the people look like that are on it now. But the one woman was Whoopi Goldberg. First of all, they had to she was on for a while and then remember she said some crazy stuff about Jews. Yeah. And they had to take her off. It was the same thing with Kelly Osborne. Kelly Osborne. They brought was her back on, in, yeah. She, it was her. <laughs> it was Kelly Osborne and Rosie Perez. Oh. And somebody else was on that week. And Rosie Perez. It was like, um, I still love her from White yeah, Man Can Joe. Too. That shower She's scene the boy. Um, but uh she uh Osborne's on and she's like on her soapbox going off on a speech and talking all this shit on Donald Trump and she says 
if Donald Trump puts up that wall and all these Ill- illegal immigrants can't come into this country, she goes, who's going to clean our toilets? Oh, I remember And that, Rosie yeah. Perez just goes like, <laughs> and was like, what did you just say? And she's like, no, no, no. I just meant like they have jobs. And yeah, then next oh week, God. next week, Kelly Osborne was not on the She video. was gone? Gone. Oh, I don't even remember that. But Call yeah, that's- her fucking that's... Nicolas Cage. She was gone in 60 seconds, <laughs> Yeah, brother. oh my God. That's when the left eats it eats itself. You know what I mean? Oh, she's so, so left. She outlefted it. The left. She's crazy. That whole family sucks. She was dude. like all her plastic surgery. Yeah, and... I mean, dude, the, anyone on the View. I mean, come on, bro. Yeah, it's ridiculous. There's a bunch of shows like that, but uh, I really like. I've been really getting into Doctor Phil lately. There's dude, some, he's crushing it. He was great on Dr. Rogan, Phil and then stuff. um, he's like the Nelk Boys. Uh, they're all right at interviewing. They're younger and like their brand is that. Like they don't need to be doing a podcast, yeah. but uh, they do all right. It's funny when that Bob Meary guy comes on because it's just a shit show. But uh, he was all right on that. Like they kind of had some decent questions for him. Like I don't even know. They're just what? like a bunch of kids who don't have to worry about anything because they're rich. So oh, like for their what? questions. They're rich from YouTube videos or something. It started on YouTube and then. Um, YouTube kept like not monetizing them because mm-hmm. of like the problems that like we ran into of just like speech stuff. And there's a guy, Steve will do it on there. He used to chug beers all the time. And because he's pro Donald Trump, they've actually like froze his channel and <laughs> he was making millions off of it. Now, isn't that insane? Yeah. You can't like, there's a lot of stuff that like what we said is why we get flagged. This yeah. will probably get pushed down because we brought up anything, but I said Jews. So yeah. that's probably, <laughs> um, so, uh, what they ended up doing was they made merch and they made high quality merch and they did it like where they're like, hey, this is a one off mm-hmm. and we're only making this. And they built an apparel brand. And I think they like the first shirt they dropped, they made like a couple million dollars in like seconds. What? And then so uh, they just knew that they could lean on the the. So they weren't monetizing off of YouTube because YouTube kept flagging them and everything. So they built everything off of like meetups and doing merch. And then um, they just made so much money off of it. They just kept expanding out on it. And then they ended up making uh, the Happy Dad seltzer. And now they're partnered with the UFC because the UFC's Dana's son was like, hey, check this guy Kyle out. He's like pretty good at business. And they're doing this cool shit. And then Dana was like, you have. I'm into cool shit. Yeah. Dana's like, you have the pulse of a generation Come on over here to UFC, yeah. and that's why you see, uh, like Sugar Sean's one of their sponsored fighters, and right. they'll okay, throw yeah. uh, seltzers out to uh, the Shoey guy. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it, it's cool. It's cool that they started something like we, like you know what I mean. Like we just started this. I mean, yeah. we get cool things out of it. It hasn't yeah. gone on that level, but right, yeah. it's just a couple of kids starting some shit because they don't want to work. Yeah, it helps me out, and I'm just you know, like you said, like I just started the. Uh, podcast in general just to speak to the students at first yeah like I was like all right no one's gonna listen to this like I'm yeah not I remember like, that when you started Zach's corner yeah I was like I'm just gonna have to start talking and I'm I plan on you know for the future like I've been mad inconsistent but this is you know with you not doing it as much anymore and kind of transitioning to another um uh you know phase like with the the cooking it's and all hard stuff. to fit yeah. it in yeah it is but like it's I, long I think, format i think i have an idea of how i'm going to do it so i think i'm going to set up some cameras and stuff at the gym in uh the uh middle room the massage room or whatever it's called and then uh i'm going to have like a two chair set up with one camera and just two mics just so like someone's in town or whatever i could bring them in and be like okay like you know just give me 20 minutes like instead of because like really we're just if you think about it you know um, pro tip most of the um, things like now if you see on Instagram what do I get locked in on reels that's yep. what I will I'll get locked in and if if Instagram algorithm is working that night and I'm getting Norm McDonald clips I'm getting Mike Tyson I'm getting UFC I'm getting um, rap uh, f- like freestyles like I'm getting um, chicks with big butts i'm getting like that's my whole feed yeah. like just constantly and i'm trying to be like you know and you'll get locked into that shit and you'll hours, just sit there hours yeah. i'll do it two hours straight and just be like where am i <laughs> i'll like get up my vision's bad yeah. but you got you're crushing what reels yeah like i saw a we bunch of that, uh yeah. like i saw like the finisher north stuff coming out and that ted park design's fucking awesome mm. both those that he put out i was like I, he just started posting again and i was just like oh like 
I love everything that dude does. Yeah. And he crushes everything that yeah. he, uh, he touches. Every single When he thing. did the North stuff, I was like, oh, that's so fucking cool with the mountain and the yeah. bear. Dude, it's and then sick. I saw, like, the, he showed the DMs, and then I was like, oh, he just home run that dude, thing. Yeah. First, first of all, Ted Park, don't miss, bro. He don't. He does not. He There's don't nothing miss. that I've never seen him do something and be like, oh, I don't know about that. You know what I mean? Yeah. He really doesn't. Like, and I, and you, what's, what's insane is I met that guy. Um, I don't even know. It, originally, he worked with uh, a brand, Hypnotic. Yeah, it's not around anymore. And then, um, and then he started. You know, I still think he works with Fuji. And uh, you know, we met him through just jujitsu and stuff. And uh, they ended up sponsoring Grace. And we went down to Grace was in a uh, the um, uh, uh, shout out to Grace Gundrum, and uh, she was in a uh, tournament in uh, the Honored Invitational, and in Texas. And that was like before it was cool. Like you know, how everyone's going to Texas now. I was going to Texas. Yeah, you guys were going. To, you guys went and visited the on it lab. Yeah, I went to Texas probably like three, maybe like four or five times before like it got really popular to where it's like now I get down there and like you even know about Texas. Like I've been down here before you people. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's but just like um, people you know and homeless. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but Austin is Austin's pretty crazy. It's a lot of fun. I do love we're Austin. We want to plan yeah. a trip. Yeah, we, dude, you definitely should, man. I've been up to Austin a whole bunch. It's the next road trip yeah. I think we're going to do. We're going to plan it around going so to see much Kill Tony. So much food. Yeah, and I want to go see that, yeah. too. There's so many. How crazy things. is it that show's that big now? Mm. Had, like, David Tell and David Spade on. Dude, they had Tucker Carlson. Yeah, 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 that was funny. Sitting there, and they were, like, yeah. calling him the N-word yeah, and stuff yeah, yeah, like yeah. that. That Cam Patterson comes out. Yeah, that guy. My grandmother Kim, fucking hey, hates you. Yeah, he's like, no, Kim she Patterson don't. And he's slash. like, yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's hilarious, dude. It's cool I love watching that comics be built on yeah, the show. I like when they bring in, like, um, like crazy-ass comics like that's... Uh, uh, and they really rip on each other. Yeah, like the good fun, podcast yeah. ones, like yeah. uh, Mark Normand always rips on everybody, yeah, 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 Dan yeah. Soder. Yep. So usually when like there's a good comedian on Rogan, and it's just like New York comics or podcast comics that'll fucking tear into you. Yeah. What happened to uh, Darnell Williams? Or remember Ashy Larry? Did he like walk off a Kill Tony set or something like that? Something, Someone's trying to tell me. He, he got They into were it. making fun of him really bad. He got into it with uh, somebody over. Um, he got into it with a comedian who was ripping on Dave Chappelle. That was the last thing I saw with him. Ah, okay. I yeah. hope he got up and walked we off. We actually He's met him. Actually, I should post those pictures up again for fun, but uh, we actually met um, Tony Hinchcliffe when... Uh, I yeah, you guys like met him backstage. Yeah. You like sent me pictures of like you hanging out with Choking Tony Hinchcliffe out, and Rogan. Just like five pictures of like Renee yeah. choking out Tony Hinchcliffe. And he's like, I really... Then he was telling us, he was what like, What was that for? Uh, Eddie's thing? Uh, uh, no, that was the ADCC, right. uh, last ADCC. Like I just acted like I was working for... Which I kind of was, but I just acted like I was working for Flow Grappling. But the job that I do for Flow Grappling is totally remote. So I don't need to be there <laughs> at all. Just I just play. I just walked in with a laptop, and they're like, look like I mean business. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, they're go like, ahead. who's that? Yeah. Like, he creates the thumbnails? They're like, he's the guy who does... No, I don't even create the thumbnails. I push those off to Sean push because Sean. I can't do that shit. How crazy is it? Yeah, he's from, another guy, man. He's he another just, one. Where is it, bro? It's you crazy. Don't fucking mess. I when I Local Stone, I've been trying to get on here, and like me and Local Stone, like broke down our relationship of like when we started food, and it's very similar to this conversation where like you look through how long me and you have been doing this, which I have been in this base, and I think this is year six, so we've probably been working on all these projects with all these different people for probably four years yeah, straight. At least. So it's like when when you first talked about a Sean, like. He was like, had nothing and yeah. like was just trying so hard to like become who he is right now. Yeah, yeah. And when I see him posting like that bougie shit in his <laughs> hotel, yeah, no, I'm yeah. like, good for fucking yeah, you, showing. man. I'm like, like no one knew who he was. And then you brought him into the fucking jujitsu game. And then this is my opinion only. And I know a lot of jujitsu guys listen to this shit, but like everything is now copy paste what the fuck you've been yeah. doing with a Sean and then now I just see these other schools and like it's nothing against them it's because he has I feel like he built you two have built like um a footprint yeah. of like what it's supposed to be and you need people to do that but it's yeah. like to watch a Sean just completely crush anything he's touching and like seeing people seminars and like He's now being used essentially like, and I just remember you're like, yo, I got this guy from Sri Lanka. Yeah. His name's a Sean. He's yeah. like, I think you're like, I think we can get him to do thumbnails for now yeah. we go. Yeah, I know. <laughs> he, it's cool, man. people like me. You it's cool. I mean? 
Um, no, I'm just kidding. That was a Scarface thing. But yeah, dude, like we're so some of the guys like uh, I've always believed in them, and I can just tell they him not even training jujitsu, he knows. Like he just gets the feeling, yeah, of what like looks good. He does it really fast. Yeah, and, I tell everybody, yeah. I'm like, I got this guy. This is, I can give you his info. His big big thing is it'll be done immediately. <laughs> yeah, it's immediately. I've it's, already uh, texted you and been like, hey, he finished that yeah. thumbnail. We can post the episode now. Yeah. I know, and you know what? He's waiting on me most of the time. Like, even right now, I have a new scheme I'm working on. So, hear me out on this one. So, I'm going to, this weekend, I know this will come out later, but I have a uh, seminar at Boston University. So, I'm really excited about that because uh, shout out to Will. Uh, shout out to uh, um, Will McGlone for getting me to Boston University. So, I knew some guys that went to boston before and i always knew that they had a jiu-jitsu club there you know so i followed it and then when will started going there he was like man i'll bring you out for a seminar or whatever i forget how we talked about it but then um now that it's going down this weekend it's pretty awesome i'm very excited to do that and uh you know work boston like bu is a pretty big college like yeah. that's no joke dude like it's a it's a good school so, um, and I've been working with a lot of colleges around here too. So not to give too much away, but listen, before, hopefully I don't get there before you, but, um, if in your area, if you're a dojo, I'd be looking into the local high schools and colleges. Now high schools, I've only ever gone to, you know, set up a table or whatever, but colleges though, breaking in there is really important because, um, you know, there's a lot of college kids, they don't have much to do. Um, a lot of times their parents have money, so they could probably sign them up for the gym. And if they don't have money, the college will probably work out some way to have a club where the kids can still train somehow for free for them, but the college pays you. Yeah. So I have, I'm going to BU and they already have a, a jujitsu club there that Will teaches at. So he's one of our purple belts and he, tr he teaches, you know, the classes there and they're dude, they beat Harvard. They beat a bunch of other um, really good schools and so like there's colleges uh, doing jujitsu competitions. Yeah, they're having. Now? They're not even. Is this new? Uh, no, no. But it was very like no one knew about it. Yeah, you know. But I think they did have like you know meetups basically, and they compete against each other. So from I'm gonna ask them more about it. From the looks at it, there'd be like five or six different schools, and it looks like they have teams, and they play. They went against each other. They beat Harvard. They beat a bunch of other colleges. So, and you know, jujitsu is such a thing where it's so it's really. You know, obviously you can get injured, but you can get injured doing any kind of sport, but it's something that you can take on after college. You can continually do it. And while you're at college, it's a great um, workout besides just going to the to the like local to, or to the uh, college gym where there's football players and wrestlers and all these weightlifters there when you're like might be intimidated to be just a, a regular kid at school, but you want to work out. You want to do something. What am I going to do? I'm not good enough to be on the college like team, even though we are getting some of the wrestlers from ESU now, which is pretty dope that are training up at finishers North. Um, I like that. It's growing like that. Yeah. Well, it's like, uh, you know, it's weird. Like, so even tonight at, at Bethlehem, we had a kid, um, he came in, he wrestled for Wisconsin, I think, and um, he's a three-time All-American and, uh, you know, national championship finalist, I think, um, and he wrestled for Parkland. And so he was just came in because he knew one of the other guys. So, like, we're a three-time All-American? Like, that is no joke, bro. You know what I mean? So, like, this guy is like, look, okay, so the Bethlehem School is working. We're working with Lehigh. So, Greg, old man Greg, um, Greg the Hammer, uh, Greg Henry, he's a, um, a professor at Lehigh. So he's got to work in the students, getting the cut, the club going. So we got Lehigh, we got ESU. My boy Kelvin up there is, is, uh, one kid that I met that, uh, he wrestles for ESU and he's working on the club there with the guys from, um, East Stroudsburg university. And then now I'm going to Boston. Will's teaching out there. So I'm like going to start infecting the colleges. So now I have a Sean as my, you know, um, uh, I guess you would say he's my right hand man. Cause I was like telling him, like, I might have to hire like a secretary if I really want to start like pushing this kind of stuff out because I feel like I have uh, a really good, you know, in with colleges. Yeah. You know, like Rutgers University, Gary Tony used to teach there and stuff. So I'm going to try to just get that route. Like, let me go the school route and see, you know, what I can do. Maybe teaching seminars, maybe like helping them with whatever. And it's great for kids to just 
blow off steam. Like, fuck it, I'll just go to jujitsu for two hours and then I'll go back and study again. You know what I mean? And the kids are really getting into it. So um, we never had that before. You know, now we're training the police and everything like that. I don't know where the hell I was even going with that, but just having that other route. Oh, Ashan, I'm just going to have him like spamming every single college and he'll get it done. He's waiting oh, on me to get him. He'll do that 10 times faster yeah. than fucking using anybody yeah. else. He's getting, he's waiting mm. on me to give him like packages and how much we're going to charge and stuff. So I'm always scheming and working on stuff, bro. You have to yeah. be. It's. I mean, I'm already planning stuff I'm going to be doing over there because everyone always asks like, well, what are you going to do with the podcast? What are you going to do with the podcast? And I'm like, just because I'm leaving the studio doesn't mean the show's over. I'm definitely taking a break. I've been doing this since I was 28 years yeah. old. I'm 44. I started Never Again when I was 20 fucking eight years old. I have not stopped doing this at all. And it's like, I know that like I'm not going to stop doing it because I've had I've tried to stop. This is my creative outlet. But what I do need to do is like get the restaurant open, start making money, figure, you know, I'm going to have to have employees. But like once it's set up, like... I'm gonna. I already. Know, I'm already thinking in my head. I'm like, oh, I can do this. I can do that. Like, fucks that's delicious. Oh, I can make videos for fucking this and that. And I'm not even giving too much away because I have enough people taking my shit. Yeah, that's this true. town's got 19 yeah. coffee shops. In it. Where did that <laughs> idea come from? Play more bagels in town, please. Yeah. Um. So like, um. You know, there's just shit I'm gonna do. The, the, it needs to evolve. It cannot stay here. If finishers stayed in Jimmy John's, yeah. it would not be where the fuck it is today. Yeah, exactly. So it's time to grow and it's time to get into. I want a new fucking canvas and mm -hmm. I'm just going to fucking put a lot of shit on pause, start making some fucking money. I'm moving. I haven't had an apartment in fucking over 10 years yeah, because I gave awesome. up my apartment for the studio. So like it feels cool to be, Oh wow. Like this was worth something. I'm opening a restaurant. I'm getting a fucking apartment. My ride to work six fucking minutes and I'm not riding to work. I'm riding to my fucking business. Yep. I own with two of my best friends. Like, it, to me, it was worth it all, minus some people dying that, like, you know, you don't have control over that, but you got to get past it, and you got to you got to set goals, and you got to move forward, and no matter how much it sucks, hanging out and fucking wishing they were still alive, which isn't going to change. They don't want you to be that way, and you got to fucking suck it up and move forward, and when you do that and get past all that bullshit, you can literally do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. I've been down here for six fucking years grinding the fuck out non-stop not doing anything but being down here and the payoff is i'm gonna own a fucking restaurant and yeah. that's the start of it because now it's a real business yeah let's get into two fucking businesses let's get into fucking buying buildings let's get into fucking all the shit we've been talking yeah. about for the last four years i see you opening up another school me opening a restaurant and i'm like at least we're doing it yeah. not just sitting around talking about trying it. yeah I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep swinging. Like guys, even you have like, to. I talked to my dad today. What else I, are we gonna yeah, do? Exactly. There's nothing. What are we gonna do? Quit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't have that option. Yeah. Uh, but also too, like I was talking to my dad, and he was just asking me about what's going on. Like, how's the new school? You know, and everything. And I'm telling him, and he just like, you know, I don't know. I can never do what you do. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, yeah, you would have had to have trained. 30 years of jiu-jitsu <laughs> and he's like no 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 he's like not that he's like I, I i can't like he's like i always just you know i took the safe route and wanted the nine to five and was like i'll just do this as a job it'll pay yeah. me enough money i know what i gotta do but i gotta put up with some shit but it's still a great life you know nothing wrong with it yeah I mean, my that's dad most people's that. life worked you know in a factory I mean? Yeah, my dad worked, did computer stuff, computer programming, you know what I mean? Did all that, went to college at Bloomsburg, the whole nine. But, like, you know, he was gone every day, eight to five or whatever, nine to five, you know what I mean? So, and then, you know, it was like the whole typical, like, family thing. It's like, oh, we're going to take our one week vacation yeah. and we're going to go on to they the told beach us or we whatever. Could take off. Yeah, and that's totally awesome, man. I love that. And I had a great life growing up. It's just that. Maybe it's because I'm a Gemini and I was born on the same day as Kanye West. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I just have this thing in me that I feel like I need to keep pushing it. Yeah. And I'm not happy in yeah. unless I am doing it. Now, do I like to take off? Obviously. I love taking off and chilling out. And like I, I relish the fact that I get to wake up every day with my son. But because like, of you pushing is why you get to do right, that. Exactly. So sometimes I feel like today, he'd be in daycare. Yeah, exactly. He'd be in daycare. If I was working at a job where like most people said I should have just took the job at the county and I could have been working. And I was like I was talking with my dad. I could have been working at um, Lehigh County. Uh, juvenile probation department which is like the somewhat professional job that I had before this 
and um, before I started really going 100% into martial arts, and I worked at a construction company too. It's not even construction. It was like a concrete cutting company, um, fastening house, they used to call them back in the day, GNS Fasteners, my boy Sean, shout out to Sean Green, who actually is the first guy who got me into podcasting, but um, he uh, got me a job when I was totally broke, out of my ass, had nothing, and he was like, yo, my uncle will give you a job counting nails. I'm like, I'm in because <laughs> it was like 12 bucks an hour or whatever. I did that and I kept training and then I got, went back to school, you know, got a bunch of student loans that, you know, that jag off Biden should cancel, even though I hate him. If he canceled it, I mean, whatever, yeah. you know what I mean? At this point, I'll give you what's, something. at this point, people are like, we're going to like, I owe like whatever thousands of dollars. People are like, we're going to have to pay off everybody's. So this is where I become not concerned in a conservative manner where they're like you should just pay off those loans and blah 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 i'm like bro they're losing 32 billion dollars that they should have spent on homeless in california but they lost it they'll send they're sending billions of dollars to all these bullshit wars and you're mad because yeah. the, the the jerk president might actually uh like do something do, here that's good for people that are here like, I do have a job. I do own a business. If anyone should get their student loans canceled, it's me. I hired, I have a whole bunch of employees that I constantly pay. And it's not like I'm selling something, like I don't sell subwoofers or anything like that. It's not like I'm some guy who just sells, like we're actually doing something we feel like for the community. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it makes no sense to me. Like, but they're, they, they don't mind. No one's going to put up a front and we give billions of dollars to all this different stuff. But then if they want to cancel like $60,000 of my student loan debt, I'm a piece of shit. But all right. So anyways, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, like, w what are you going to do? Like, once I got into doing that, I was like, bro, I don't know if I could keep doing this, man. Like, how could I, if I oh, worked I've there for- I've said that so many times at jobs. 15 years, dude. I would have yeah. been working there for 15 years. How would once my life be brought, right now? Yeah, once somebody brought up like how long you had to work till you were retired, that like haunted me. And they'd be like, oh, so-and-so is here for 22 years. And then you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. He got cancer because he was lacquering guitars. Yeah, or remember, whatever. Remember they told yeah. you you had to sign a waiver <laughs> when you got here so that if you had cancer, you couldn't sue them? Yeah, exactly. I'd be like, yeah, whatever. It's a job. And I remember the lady like selling it short. And then I met two people that died while I was there from cancer. What place was that? Martin Guitar. Oh, Martin. Yeah. Figures. I mean, dude, any of that stuff, man. I got, I remember one time when I was working at GNS, I was cutting threaded rod. <laughs> like I was just, and you'd have to wear these gloves and everything. And I'm just like, oh, normal day, just going to cut some rod. And I had glasses on, like I had goggles on. And this is also why I knew masks were bullshit. Cause I had a mask on and I would still inhale the yeah, metal like that I was cutting metal out yeah. up every day. And I got one in my eye really bad and I had to go to the doctor. And I remember like, you know, um, I drove to to the eye doctor and they had to like take it out, but it scratched my eye and yeah. it put the drops and I couldn't see. That's it fucking days. terrible. And I was like, bro, should I be? I mean, my dad would be like, you know, you're getting hurt all the time over at MMA or jujitsu. I'd be like, yeah, I know, but at work I'm getting hurt all the time. I got you my arm I mean? caught in a conveyor belt <laughs> at, a t at my first job at 16. And you know what they did? They thought I was going to sue them, so they put me on light duty and then they laid me off. And then I got a, a letter in the mail that they fired me. Wow. But like, I look back on that and I was like, I could have sued the fuck yeah. out of them. People weren't yeah. suing people oh, back no. then. No, because now if you would have sued if someone. If I would have been now, I would have been like, yo, what's up? Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, but back then, if you tried to sue someone, they'd be like, guys, yeah. knock it Let's off. Let's not you know I mean? sue each other. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, we're not going to do that. Um, but yeah, man, I, I would have been working at that job at the probation department for probably 15 years now. Yeah. And that's and even if that would even, if your job still exists there. Exactly. Yeah. Or if they gave it to somebody else yep. or whatever the situation is. So it's like, but Rocco's also to, brother's coming in. He needs a job. Yeah. You're out. And they, honestly, I never got full time there because I just had to keep waiting till someone retired. Yeah. And then eventually the guys were was. like, well, they're not retiring. Yep. You know, the guy, I'm like, isn't that one dude? Like. 60 and they're like yeah he's still still working part-time and they're like we can't put you on yep and i was like oh man all right so then like yeah eventually i was like i'm not and then actually the the truth of the matter is i worked with it so during the summer i would take these kids to like all different places and we would go to the leah valley zoo we would go to sometimes just a food bank we'd go to this um this uh this one place was the syrian arab 
you know, community center or whatever. And we would go there and have to hand out food to poor people in Allentown. And I was supposed to teach these kids like, yo, this is what like, you know what I mean? You're supposed, they're on, they're doing community service. So I'm something. And then we also worked at the recycling center, which is kind of dangerous because like there's big compactors there and stuff. And I had to learn how to work that. So I thought I was working for the probation department and here. I was doing community service with kids. So all the shit jobs that they would make kids do for community service, I led the pack. <laughs> so I would have to get yeah. kids that were there for like, you know, whatever, smoking weed or getting a fight at school or like being truant or whatever, they would do communities or they stole something, yeah. had a gun, some of them, and uh, drugs. And then they would have to, I would have to convince them to like, we got to carry all of these logs <laughs> <laughs> and put them in the back of this dude's truck. Oh yeah. And this guy is a dickhead as well. Yeah. And he don't like us and he don't want us to be here. So we just kind of, and he's probably going to talk shit to us while we're working. Like you guys ain't doing it right. You yeah. know what I mean? And then I, dude, I even got into it with the with some of the the people that we'd be working for, because I would have to say to them like, "Hey, man, I'm trying to get these kids to do these jobs. If you talk shit to them, they're yeah. not going to do it. Then I can't do my job, and then I have to go back and explain to the POs and everything. And I would have been a probation officer, but what happened was. The one summer I worked with this one kid. Some kids would be on it all summer. I worked with him all summer, and then at the end of the summer, he was like back going, to, you know, going to school or whatever. And then he was in a uh, shooting. He shot somebody. I don't remember if he actually killed him or not, but I'm pretty sure he did. And I think there was like him and two other older guys. And this kid was probably like 15 or 16. This happened in Allentown, and he was with two older guys that were in their 20s, and they ran into someone's house and like ransacked it and shot like a whole family. <laughs> And I was like, damn, I don't know if I could keep doing this. Yeah. And then it turned out years later, they found out that they were trying to do like a hit for like a gang to get into a gang and they, they killed the wrong people. So they like literally killed a mom and a dad in front of like kids. And I was like, dude, I'm out. Like after that, like I was like getting an opportunity to go to GNS full time work construction. And I literally chose a construction job over working at the probation department. I was like, dude, I can't, I just work with this kid for a whole year. Like, you know, three months, whole summer. I'm like, man, I don't know if I can keep, if I can keep showing up to work and this is how it's going to be like. And then at being a PO is even worse. Cause then you're dealing with the kids. Like, you know, you're the one having to tell them like, Hey man, if you don't do this, I'm, I'm locking you up. You know what I mean? Or whatever. Yeah. And then like, you know, you hear about some of these. You could easily be blamed as the reason why they're there. Yeah. Or a lot of times what happens too is like some of these guys get beat up or killed or, you know what I mean? Like they're working these weird hours. And even me, I was skeptical sometimes where I would, they would be like, yo, pick this. This kid didn't make it into the morning to sign in. So you got to pick them up. I don't know <laughs> if they do this anymore, but they would send me like, I'd be on like seventh, six, seventh street, right in the center city, Allentown. And I have to pull up to someone's house and now I'm driving a van that says Lee County courthouse <laughs> and have a jacket on that says yeah. pro probation. So like I would get out and you know, people didn't want to really see me there. You no. Know what I mean? They'd be like, get me the fuck and away from And you know that kid yet. ain't coming out on time. No, no. And they, the neighbors didn't want to see me with the kid. You know yeah. I mean? So, or the kid didn't want me to see, you know what I mean? The kid didn't want the neighbors to see me chilling, you know, in a PO thing, being all cool. So, I mean, it was a tough job, but Should've that's the jacket. That's one. I thought, you know what? I thought about that the other day. <laughs> I was like, man, I wonder where that PO jacket is yeah. just in case I want to. You know what I mean? Either do some role playing or um, just you know, a just, rocket. Yeah, just just roll up in a probation thing <laughs> yeah, and just scare everybody. Yeah, you just see fun. someone start sweating. Like, what is a PO doing here? <laughs> it's kind of weird. Um, but uh, yeah, so that was kind of like a really tough job, man. So I didn't want to like I couldn't go forward with that. So then getting into martial arts, I was like, I guess we're gonna see where this is gonna take me. But my dad will say that I am crazy. Like being an entrepreneur, I mean, you know, this is kind of wild because sometimes you don't know how much money you're gonna make, where your next <laughs> check, check is coming from. I can throw up with everything going on. You gotta work, work with crazy partners sometimes. Yeah. A lot of loads of different people you gotta deal with that are constantly throwing a wrench into your plans. Where like every time I take a step forward, I gotta take one back because guys did this, or you know, I get guys that are really, you know what I mean? It just turns into like a whole thing. So. I'm like, you know, yeah, it is crazy, but I also, you know, calculate some stuff. Like, I still had to work a job for a long time. I didn't just quit and had money. Yeah. You know what I mean? My parents didn't give me any money to start these businesses. Like, they gave me zero dollars. Like, I did it with, like, nothing. You know what I mean? So, 
you know, obviously people have helped me along the way. Like I was just talking about Greg bought our, our first wall pads. Like when I didn't have any wall pads and people are rolling through the walls, he bought the pads for the wall like a student did. You know what I mean? And he runs the Lehigh. I mean, that's how long some of these guys have been around yeah. with me. So it's like every time I see him, sometimes I'm like, man, like I'm so con I'm so concentrated a lot on wanting to get everyone good at jujitsu so much than be like a really good coach and like just for my own ego like i want to make sure that i know that i can get people good and that's what you know what marks a good school too and i want to be respected by my peers who doesn't want to and um but i do want to make sure that i step back and appreciate the people that we have and it's not just about being the best all the time you know what i mean it's about obviously having fun the journey which people's like oh that's just a cop out for someone who's losing but i don't feel like i'm losing yeah. I'm winning. I think you know what I mean, I but I want to make sure that I just be appreciative. Is what I'm saying. I think yeah. when you do things like you know, like you're opening the school, and it takes you out of a rhythm and a rhyme of like things that you're doing, of your coaching and all that. And I've noticed with me, like with moving and having these last couple podcasts and just packing up, you just start. You, that's when I feel like you're stopping because I, I wouldn't stop the madness down here. It would be another year of this. Yeah. So like when you start actually leaving and going on to something new and you stop, you start remembering like all, like I remember talking to local stone and we just were, we were naming so many restaurants that we went to and did pop-ups and we're like, ah, oh, this person supported us and this person on this way. And like, it's, I think that's when you kind of take a step back and look because people like us, it's like, we're not stopping. Yeah. You're just constantly go, 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 go. So mm. when you open up a new school, you start, Oh yeah, I had to get pads. Yeah. Oh, where do we get the pads from the first place? Oh, I that know. guy got the pads. It may, it's pretty crazy. I started uh so like, you know, for me also too, like I think a lot of guys get to the point where they have these monster egos just cuz, you know, whatever, shit was either gifted to them or they just think they, you know, know better or they got to a certain point and they feel like they can just you know, project their ego out to everybody. But, you know, I like doing things that check my ego. Like I, I retired obviously, but then I competed again, you know, just to, you know, feel what it's like just to yeah. put myself in there. Then, um, you know, and I won, I was only one match. I did it kind of injure myself in the match, but I won the match, which was cool. Um, it wasn't like spectacular win, but I gutted it out. Like I had to pull old veteran move to win at the end. And then, um, you know, like I'll go from teaching like a class on a Wednesday night at um, Finisher's HQ of like 35, 40 people and like three time all Americans and like, you know, this is who I'm running class with. And then I'll go to Finisher's North and there'll be six people. Eight, yeah. Four people. That's got to be trippy. You know what I mean? But also cool because it's like Finisher's in Bethlehem was started how finishes yeah. north is right now exactly same, same, same that's what i think i'm excited yeah. for is to watch it grow just yeah. seeing um and being so close to the bethlehem school and watching all that go down and you know you, you guys being so grateful to let me start the cooking business in your parking lot yeah. which is now we're opening a restaurant because of that it was yeah. just me and same. gina gina was late because she had like shit going on with her kids and i just remember um and like people were there they're like hey you're doing that burger thing today and i'm like yeah. fuck people are listening to the podcast <laughs> yeah, know, and they're yeah. like yeah man they, like they pushed you because i remember you and jm were just like just fucking do it we need yeah. food fucking do it and then my buddy bought me a flat top and i, I was out of excuses and i was like okay and i guess always, we're doing a yeah, burger they're always mad guys telling me too like yo i'm gonna come to i want to come to and do like you know do food out at your place and i'm like do it and they would just never do it yeah how many time, how many different things are it's like yo i'm gonna do this i'm gonna get a food truck i'm like no you're not you know what i mean I just when let you, people talk anymore. when you when you murdered those burgers though that first time dude people were so fucking dude there was a line i remember one time it was raining and there was a line yeah and like they were just waiting and i told the story before is that uh laura didn't get one like the first yeah, or second remember, time yeah. and then when we did the pop-up the third time it was like her and pre and they're like we want ours now yeah, and I, I remember laura was just like I want my burger. I yeah. didn't get my burger. And she's like, I want two. Yeah. And John's not getting one. Those are for me. <laughs> and then that was the start of people coming up early and being like, I'll Venmo you right yeah, now. Yeah. And, then, and then we'd be like, cool. And then Gina would write it down and it would be like Laura and Pre. That's and, what I used to do. Yeah. I used to get mine early. So like, yeah. I got to get mine for Kat. You know what I mean? Make sure she gets yeah, hers. Was, I think there was a time we sold over 200 burgers in the parking lot in the summer. Yeah. And we, we didn't even know what we were doing. Yeah. Just those burgers were so good. People still ask me 
me about those. So I'm like, yo, is Mike ever coming back? I'm like, dude, he's real busy, you know? And they're yeah. like, what's he up to? I'm like, I ah, start opening up a restaurant. They're like, oh, I knew it. <laughs> That's what they say. Yeah. Because you know? everyone always said, they're like, you, is this a restaurant? And I'm like, no. I don't know. The burger's special to me. I, I, I mean, we're opening up a bagel shop. It's going to be about the bagel. The bagel's awesome. Uh, you know, that's a creation from mostly Gina, but myself as well. And, um, you know, we're branding and building a, a breakfast restaurant. Um, and then I'm that's gonna sick. do then Saturday nights I'm gonna do something with the burger and I know the burger's gonna end up on the menu but it's good to have two things like that and to be that fucking ran over in the beginning is nuts so it's like you know or I'll just do it on Saturday nights and your overnight Amazon guys will have a fucking treat yeah. over there and or I mean dude we're doing like we watched the fights we gotta talk about the fights a little bit before yo we down, dude but, um, I wanted to come yeah. by George hit me up but I I watch religiously with the four guys and you know what I mean it's yeah, just, yeah, that's it's just who I have to watch with um, we uh, we had like a allegedly we may have or may not have as Uncle Dana doesn't get on my shit list here is uh we had like a little viewing party, you know, so we were watching UFC and everything. And uh, man, the people were hyped. It was fun. Like everybody's totally co cool. Everybody's just chilling, kind of just yeah. maxing out on the mat. And uh, man, like watching the first couple fights, people were getting hyped. It was crazy yeah. to have that many, like, because we as a group all started watching at six. That's mm -hmm. that's so unheard yeah, us of. Too, yeah, um, Because normally people, oh, I'm just coming for the main, or like George would show up uh, for the main, but you know, the diehards would be at least prelims, but you, we wouldn't really ever fuck with the early prelims. Nah. But for Jim Miller and Bobby Green and Had fucking Cody on, yeah. and fucking. Uh, uh, what's his face, Figueroa? Yeah. Like I was like, Phew. then it goes into like Holly Home, and then I was like, it was awesome, man. As a fight fan, to watch it as much as we do, um, sometimes you get lost in it because it doesn't hit. But to, when Max Holloway did that, we started hugging each other. It's what all of us watch every single yeah. fucking Saturday for. It's that moment that you want. I mean, Dana White summed it up perfectly in the presser, but like. I love Max Holloway. Me I too, yeah. I doubted Max Holloway in that fight so because Max Holloway hasn't looked like Max Holloway in a long time. And Max Holloway did such a Max Holloway thing in the fucking end. And I was it was just like boom, superstar. Yeah. Like he's yeah. I heard uh, he's I heard, fucking awesome. Yeah. I mean, uh, I always like Max Holloway too, but I doubted him as well because um, you know, Gaethje. Well, such Gaethje a murderer, just fucking yeah. put out a. a Dustin. Or yeah, yeah, with you a head think, kick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was like, "Whoa, I don't know, man. He's coming up weight. Like Gaethje's got the murderous leg kicks." Yeah, Gaethje's always like the scariest dude ever. How did he eat them? I don't, leg kicks? Dana said in the presser that he was walking around the back, just like, you know, I'm sure that adrenaline dump came down, and he dude, wasn't. Yeah, I mean, bro, I, I, listen, I've done a couple of MMA fights. When I got kicked in the leg really hard in the fight, I was able to, you know, withstand, and I only got kicked like three or f maybe five times total the whole fight, but like. I didn't check him. Like, I just ate him on the leg. And this was, like, another guy that's good, but not, like, you know, Gaethje. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, where, like, it doesn't matter how tough your leg is. He's just going to take it out. Yeah. You know? So that that was insane. When he hit that, like, did you see the reaction video? Did I show uh -huh. you the... Bro, I'll show you more. Or uh, I have it saved because I don't want to post it up. But, um, dude, like, everyone at the school went insane. Yeah. I feel like, like everyone everywhere went insane. Um, what we, else can you get that excited for? Is I, there anything? That's probably the most um, like testosterone thing I've ever seen ever. Like, <laughs> we just start. I started screaming. Um, I started grabbing my friend. He was fucking screaming. Yeah. And then my two buddies were screaming, and we didn't stop screaming. Yeah. And we just. I lost my voice. Yeah. And the next day, my buddy texted his neighbor because they live in a half a double, and he's like, "Hey, I'd like to apologize to you and your entire family. UFC 300 was on last night. Me and the boys went a little too yeah. far." Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's like, "My family didn't wake up." He said, "I was up though, watching." It. And he goes, "I kept hearing like you know you guys yell," and he's like, "It was just interesting." Interesting to hear, like the whoa, and the whoa. guy wasn't watching it. No, oh he's my not, god. And um, sometimes he comes over, but he's just out of his el element. Yeah, yeah. And um, should have just watched it though. So he said when that happened, he almost texted my buddy Tim to be like, 
what's going on? I'm coming on? over. But he said everyone was just screaming, and then he said somebody just kept yelling, he fucking killed him. He <laughs> fucking killed him. He fucking killed him. Uh, it, was, yeah. it was awesome. Uh, I uh, And then even afterwards, after the whole thing dumped down, and there was... I felt like that moment was so long before the next fight. And I remember I went up to each one of my buddies and I hugged them. And I was like, this is what we watch every Saturday for. I go, it was fucking awesome. It was so... Because that moment has occurred with Holloway several times or like people always talk about doing it. But for those two to actually do it and then with one second left... I mean... It was cool that... uh, Did you see uh, Mark Goddard? Yeah. I was like, hey, will you release the audio? He's like, I never yelled like that my entire career. Uh, He was like, oh, it's over. It was was so... It was cool how the UFC handled it. They released the footage like they did when Sugar uh, defeated Aljo. Mm -hmm. And then they started releasing more of it and they were like, look, this was a very special night. Let's Mm -hmm. share it. And like ESPN, like put it up. Yeah. It's just, I love that. That's, it's been a while for it to be considered a sport. It's been a while for it to be on ESPN. I mean, it used to be on fucking Spike TV. It's come a long fucking way. It really and, has. I, and, I, and I've been watching the whole fucking time. And sometimes my friends who watch sports, they kind of give me shit. Like, you know, now they can't because it's on. Yeah. But like, I remember when they used to be like, oh, it's not this. You, what do you think this is? And then now it's, you know, because it used to be like, oh, McGregor, that's it. And then now it's like, I feel like more of that stuff, it like is like legitimatizes it as its own thing. Yeah. It was fucking dope. Yeah, it was. Then crazy. there was two fights after that. I know, and you know what, man? Like this, this is what I say though. Like in in sports, like and and I love all sports. Yeah. Like I don't, I shouldn't say that. I don't love it anymore. But I did like all sports: football, baseball, and basketball. Jordan, you know, obviously I like the Phillies. You know, I liked a lot of different baseball teams. Uh, the Buffalo Bills, they never won. You know what I mean? The whole thing. But I've seen other people react to, like, teams winning Super Bowls. And they're like, we're winning the Super Bowl. And it's like, you know, 42 to yeah. 6. And they're running out yeah. to score or whatever. And it's like, or they're, like, playing the time I, timeout game at the end of the yep. thing. Yep. Or basketball, they're just waiting for the last shot. Yep. And even when they hit the last shot, it ain't that exciting. Yeah. You know what I mean? In in NFL, there's really no... Ah, man, it's so tough. Unless I've been a fan of, like, the White Sox for, like, 25 years, yeah. and they win in a walk-off, two outs, two, three, you know, full count, and the guy hits us. You know what I mean? Other than that, I don't see... Because that's only, like, your team. In this, it's, like, a collective. Everyone who is watching, except for maybe, like... Gaethje's family. Oh, uh, you see the reaction friends. of his dad? No, but his dad I got were, scared. Mom and dad were behind the fighters. Did they show and, him? Yeah, and like somebody had like a zoomed in thing, and his dad was just like, fuck. And uh, yeah. you couldn't see all of it, which I preferred, but uh, yeah. it was kind of hard to watch in a well, sense of like his mom and dad yeah. who are just like, it's would be the same as my mom and dad. Right, it's just yeah. like an older couple. Yeah, and when someone gets KO'd like that, like even when he got knocked down, like everybody though around there, ah, you know, you know who was there? Uh, Shivey's brother, Jeremy. Jeremy was where? Uh, at UFC 300. Was he there? Oh, he, shit. He posted something, and I texted him, and I said, how loud was that? And he goes, it was insane. Deafening, yeah. Yeah. And see, that's what I mean, though, because that's like not just a one. It's everybody around the feeling community. feeling that, dude? Yeah, just yeah. went insane. It was it was cool to see the fighters' reactions. It yeah. was cool to see Rogan's react. Like I always love the analyst reactions, but yeah. like the refs' reaction, like eh, like it was. Uh, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, it was. Uh, and then what was funny is he's like, Joe Rogan, you haven't brought me up in your show in a while. <laughs> it's like uh-huh. Max Holloway. You could do whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell are yeah. you talking about? But yeah, I mean, I felt I bad for him soon. when he got not, when he was just laying there, yeah. I felt immediately. I was, I like, was oh still yelling. Gosh. We were still celebrating that had stopped. And then he was still out yeah. cold. That's right. When I saw that, like, but uh, the, he was out re- for a while. Yeah, Our reaction was so funny. Guys got up and just started running around yeah. the room and like yeah. punching things and grabbing each other. And it's like, uh, you know, Fighting is a very um The only thing that's ever come close thing. to that. Yeah, very much so. Yeah. The only thing that's ever come close to that is when uh I'm a big Izzy fan. Um and um when he finally got his win over Pereira. Yeah. And like everybody down here was kind of like, we, we we didn't think he was gonna get it, but everyone was just like, ah, we just want Izzy to get this W over him. Mm. And when he did it, we were all like, let's fucking go. Yeah, that is cool. It's fun. It's a dump off, man. Yeah. Uh just that- a bunch of fucking 
it's violence, man. Yeah. I, I love it. I and love everything about it. Th think about how what what happens in wrestling and jujitsu is the same thing. Like you're fully invested in the guy we're watching him when he hits a move, yeah, and like a tap, and he's ah, and everybody's going nuts. Like when Thor, like at ADCC, when Thor, so I'm out there coaching him, right, and I'm like, you know. He's going against Rustam Chizia, which is the matchup we spoke about before. Like, yo, that would be a sick matchup. Imagine if they put you against the Russian bear. Yeah. You know, the dude who has the I was going to say, is that the guy who's hairy? Yeah, the full yeah. back thing and everything. And he takes the shirt off and everything. And, you know, John obviously is probably nervous as hell. I'm sure. Like, everybody's nervous before this stuff. And then right when he goes out there, I'm like, oh, damn, this is going to be insane. And I look back, and that was, like, the biggest crowd I've ever been, like, in for jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Seeing, like... Whatever, I don't even remember where we're at in that one, wherever that two ADCCs ago was. And there's so many people in the crowd. And like he hits them, like he taps them and just stands up. And I don't even think he knew what to do at first. Like it was like the crowd went insane and he was just like, Wah! yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And you just see me in the background, like, <laughs> like crazy like this yeah. is insane it's cool when they yeah. show the coaches in the ufc too and in 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 last adcc like when um the place is so quiet and then the guys are out there grappling and someone just craig jones is up and someone just goes grab his dick and twist it yeah, you know yeah. what i mean and they start yelling and it's just like i i just it's hard to under, to explain to people who like it's not their thing, but when you get involved in it, it's like and you start watching the fights and you know the guys. Like even my cousin, yeah, my my cousin Tanner, he's like super into it now. They watch the fights. My cousin Matt, who like he never really trained, but he used to hang out with me all the time. Yeah. Like he's basically like my one of my brothers. Same thing. They get into it and like it just keeps hyping people up. And I really feel like. You know, it's something to like besides sports that it's really hard to disappoint. Like, you could have shit fights, but it's kind of hard to disappoint. If you like a bunch of different guys, yeah. it's not like, the, oh, I can't wait. I, just if the Eagles don't win this week, I'm going to be yeah. so pissed. And what's cool with fighting, too, and, and it's uh, it's how I changed. You know, I've been watching it for a very long time. I got emotionally attached to two different fighters. Uh, you know, it's it's hard being a Conor McGregor fan. Yeah. And, um, it's the last person that I'll, I'm ex I'll be excited when he's done. It'll be the last time I ever emotionally attach myself to somebody where I was literally upset that they lost. Um, yeah. And now what I do and what I've learned from this is uh, what's the better fight after this? So, okay, well, if we got, you know, um, any two guys, okay, well, if this guy, like, say Strickland Costa. Mm -hmm. All right, well, what happens if uh, – um, or – even I'm trying to think of uh, one that was recent. It was like the Jiri one. All right, so if Jiri wins, all right, now we got Jiri back on track to be going for a fucking belt. He, I love watching him fight. Yeah, he's, he's a weird crazy. samurai guy. That other guy who he ha has fought, hasn't has fought in like 10 years or whatever. And I'm like, all right, well, if he beats him, the UFC is doing nothing with this guy. Yeah. They're not pushing him up. Mm -hmm. He's probably just going to be dropped off and be thought, you know. But if now the Jiri one, they're already talking about Jiri and Jamal Hill. And I'm like, so now I kind of base it off of like, all right, Strickland Costa. All right, like who? Where does it? Where does this go? Where yeah. does this go? All right, well, Strickland's a loud mouth. Maybe he can get back on track somewhere. Costa looks like he's on his way out. So I started watching fights in with like, what fight do you want to see the out of that? Yeah, what, what's yeah. a better story out of that? Who? What's going to be a, a bigger pay per view if somebody wins this? Like, especially if someone's close to a belt and uh -huh. somebody's just kind of even like Pereira. So it's like I like Jamal Hill, but like Pereira is so decorated yeah, I know, with, yeah. since he came in there. And then to knock him out the way he did, it's like, well, what the fuck are you going to do with him? Yeah. If Jamal Hill would have won, they probably would have rematched. Or like, oh, hey, this guy's coming in. So I like, to, I like to watch now with like what is a more exciting fight with who will win. Mm -hmm. And that that saves me a lot of fucking uh, – a lot of bullshit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it really saves on – um having to have a favorite and like uh i'm arguing with less people yeah yeah i don't even that's the thing that's one of the reasons why i told you this before like i don't really get attached to these guys unless it's tough I, unless i know them yeah i really want them to win but i realize if they lose i'm like ah, all right like the you know poirier I mean? fight like yeah. uh, like i don't really like poirier um because i'm a connor fan and like um in that fight like i want him to finally get the belt 
Like to me, I'm like, if he wins that fight, like retire. Like you, yeah. like I've watched him from Spike TV mm -hmm. as a fucking shaved head kid, yeah, yeah, all the way up to selling hot sauce yeah. and like being the fucking man. And like he just fucking knocked that dude out, who they basically brought in to retire him. Mm -hmm. Like I like seeing that behind the scenes shit. Yeah. Like the UFC is trying to get him out because yeah. every once in a while they'll be like, like I feel like Strick Strickland's on that chopping yeah, block. Yeah. Like he's been annoying and stupid with the UFC. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna send somebody to murder him yep. soon. Yeah, so like they they always do that. Anytime Dana doesn't like you yeah, or yeah, you yeah, piss yeah, the yeah. UFC off, <laughs> yeah, you got like hot, uh, rat lip coming. For I always you. bring up I always bring up Tito Ortiz. Yeah, because oh yeah. When he pissed them off, bro, because for a was while, the same. as soon as Woodley lost that bell, goodbye. They were uh, they were giving him Ken Shamrock a bunch of times, yep. remember? And he yeah. was winning easily winning those fights because Ken Shamrock's out of his mind. But then eventually, when he did like his rerun with the UFC, yep. he and Dana like you know maybe it was contract or like Dana originally used to manage Tito Ortiz. Yeah, he publicly talks about yeah. this kind of shit and he talks about Tito how Ortiz, stupid yeah. he is. Yeah, he's like Tito Ortiz is one of the dumbest <laughs> fucking guys yeah. of all time. And he's like and he he'll tell you he yeah. is. <laughs> and and uh it was Tito Ortiz went against um Rampage Jackson, yep. Vanderlei Silva, Leota Machida, Chuck like Liddell. They, Chuck Liddell. Yeah. They were Chuck just Liddell like multiple times. Yeah, they Randy they would lose Couture. And they'd be like run it back. Yeah, run it. Yeah, yeah. they're just like Hey, give him Machida, you know what I mean? And he did really good in some of those fights, but some of them he got wrecked, you know? Yeah, there was, like, he went on, like, because when the UFC was, like, MMA and wasn't, like, that error, and, you know, like, Liddell had already retired, yep. and, she, and uh, Tito probably had fights on his contract, and they were just, like, trying to give, like, you know, and then he finally beat Ryan Bader yeah. and, like, celebrated, like, you know, very similar to Weidman, mm. uh, eye-poking the shit out of somebody and then being like, oh, I that fucking did yeah, That was weird. I don't like that entire, I'm no. out on Aljo, I'm out on Weidman, I don't like any, the only person I like over there is Matt Sarah. Yeah, Matt Sarah's <laughs> classic. You don't like yeah. the NYC crew? Not They're at all. They're kind of weird. You know not at mean? all. We've not been all. Uh, since I've been a kid. Like I don't like Marab. Yeah. I don't like Aljo. Yeah. Aljo was the worst thing on UFC 300. Yeah. Since Bo Nickel yeah. looked better. Since I've been uh, on the East Coast, those guys are on the East Coast. Yeah. So every all the years coming up with Tiger Shulman, we'd always be going against. Um, Ray Longo, Longo. and uh, so it used to be he years ago right. with I like Sarah him Longo. On podcast, podcast. Yeah, Longo and and uh, Sarah are great, but yeah. the, the the New York guys like even so they used to even I feel the like New they York, don't feel like New York. Yeah, it's a weird New York style. They're like guy, from yeah. L. A. and then mm -hmm. they're in New York. They used to not like us because we were from Pennsylvania. So not only I would get the they we don't like you because you're from Tiger Shulman's, and then Tiger Shulman's guys would be like we don't like you because you're from Pennsylvania. Yeah, you know what I mean. So I had to took me a while to break in with those dudes, but uh, they don't they call us Pencil Tucky. Yeah, the PA boys are coming through again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Chewing on straw. Get and, your big ups. Yeah, I'd be like, yeah. all right, all right, all right. And then we had it's to, a tough thing to break. We had to go earn earn your respect from these guys but then uh you know i became friends with a whole bunch of guys from tiger showman's like mike stein and the johnson brothers and all the guys shannon maceo and guys that are yeah. you know new york long island dudes but they would always have to battle them all my first fights were kickboxing fights were in matt sarah longo's old gym yeah and uh matt sarah he's always been you can't he's the best on yeah, those roads the they started bringing the fighters on uh Rogan's thing and they're like trying to make a name for it like protect our parks but it's like yeah. MMA guys um, and Matt's there I can listen to that dude I keep forgetting he has that show on XM with Jim Norton yeah I'm serious. not a huge Jim Norton guy yeah he's anymore. weird <laughs> I kind of like got off him for a while I started yeah. hearing some weird shit about nah, him he's weird as fuck yeah. man <laughs> Jimmy he's little been, Jimmy he's Norton been, uh, <laughs> he's been talking about it for a while now he's married to it so yeah uh, little Jimmy Norton little right? Jimmy Norton yeah, what's all up? grown up <laughs> dude that guy's a fucking idiot dude. yeah that guy is stupid. I saw him uh, live a lot. I used to be into a lot of his stuff and Chip Chipperson, and then I just kind of got burned out on it. Yeah, he was the fine, same. I, I'm yeah. like that with a lot of comics. Yeah, I'm trying not to do that with Shane Gillis. Like, yeah. I'm kind of out on like Burt Kreischer and Tom Segura. Yeah, no, nah, I'm like, done with those guys. Yeah. You know what, though? Here's the thing. Like, And this is not a popular opinion, but I never really liked those guys. Yeah. I don't know. Like every The first group of dudes that Joe Rogan tried to bring in since, and it's kind of like weird. That's what Cat Williams was saying. What? Uh, when he made the, he was on uh, that Club Shay Shay podcast when it like blew the fuck up with Sterling Sharp or, or uh, Shannon yeah, yeah, Sharp yeah, I mean. yeah so like when he was like Joe Rogan and his six unfunny friends yeah uh, you know I think he was taking a shot at like those guys that used to come on with him like yeah I Bert think he was well I don't like Bert and Tom those guys always suck I like Tom from his early stuff when he did um, 
the um his stand up where he did the whole thing about bikes. Uh like his one of his early stand up is like one of my favorites. And then so like I always liked him but then like he like got money and like tried to put on this persona of like bougie and thought it would be funny and then he just came off as a fucking dick. Yeah. And then Kreischer just ruined that movie was so bad. I didn't watch it obviously. You save yourself yeah. any time. Yeah, I don't I thought, think I finished it. See, I think with those guys like I just I was already so I like Joe Rogan because I knew him from 10th Planet. Yeah. Because of Eddie Bravo was like really good friends, so like I liked Eddie Bravo. Yeah. And I always thought that those dudes when Eddie was on, I always thought that those kind of guys talked down to Eddie or they didn't like him. So I was yeah, always yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I can see that. I was always like, because like imagine like you know when you have a guy like he's a famous dude and he's got a bunch of friends and these are his jujitsu friends. Guys that he knows from fighting. Yeah, yeah, And then yeah. these are his comedy guys. And, like, he, Joe's big on comedy. So, like, you know, he's got all these comedy dudes and they're all his boys and they're funny. But then also, too, the jiu-jitsu guys could break these guys' necks if they yeah. want to. But they got to kind of put up with them. Especially, like, if they're all trying to... And Eddie and Joe were friends before. It's weird. Famous. They try and, like, you bring I mean? that bring back, like... I like Eddie on there. I've always liked Eddie on there. Yeah. I prefer Eddie with the one-on-one. -on -one. I just think there's just interesting topics that come up because those guys have been friends yeah. for so long. But when then they throw Callan and Schaub and, like... I feel like Schaub and Callan, like, have gone through so much weird stuff and yeah. have been around so much dirty stuff or even Eddie's just like, what are you two yeah, doing? Yeah, I know. It's kind of tough. Uh, yeah. The last time they got, like, for a fight companion, I was like, I can't listen to this anymore. I but I always loved Eddie Bravo yeah. on stuff. Yeah, he doesn't no. come on enough. Yeah, I think Eddie kills it Um, and he's funny and he's got, like... uh <laughs> There was like some good, really good, like Eddie clip ones where there would be like um, when he was talking about uh, when Shab was like, <laughs> if he says, if he's, have you seen his documentary? Because he would always say that, like, yeah. oh, have you seen his documentary? But like, I, li you know, obviously I'm friends with Eddie and I'm ranked on him. So like, I, you know, when I talk to him, like, or when I would see him and we would get together and he would just be telling stories, it's like, he's right a lot about a lot of the yeah. shit i mean obviously flat earth some people aren't going to like that when he talks about it but i always thought i think he's hilarious to have on and it's some of the ones that have the most views or listens to when he's on it i think he was like one of the number one guests too yeah um i don't like shab obviously no you know what i mean and no. i don't like brian callen anymore nope. but there is a, when they and, like yeah. cried that Chris D'Elia got canceled. That was so stupid. Uh, I but was like out on them. I like Dia. I like D'Elia back in the day too, and it yeah. was always so funny. Brian Callen, I will say this: Callen was funny though. He for sure. Always I knows, feel like he got in his own head. And yeah. like he's not the same anymore. No, but he used to know how to set up D'Elia yeah. all the time. Yeah. Like when he would like no that ver play that the version fall, of, yeah. of all that stuff. Um, you know, Callum was so good at setting up comics yeah. and like um, doing all that stuff. And it's just not the same anymore. <laughs> you ever see the one when they're arguing about whether he was because he was in Batman and they're pulling up the thing. He's like, yeah, I was a <laughs> yeah, Joker. Yeah, yeah, and he's yeah. like, you were not the, but you were not the Joker. He's like, there I am. He's like, Brian Callen is in Joker. He's like, it doesn't say you're in Joker. It was like that kind of stuff was yeah. funny because they're having, it's a, like some people think it's like a real interaction but they're like having that's like a bit they're doing yeah they even though they may not have known they were going to do that bit callen is setting them up yeah like he would always set them up you know so they always had funny ones but then they just those guys just got a little famous and got super weird man yeah you know like and i can't say even super weird because i know my my one buddy um chris deal you hit on his wife before i want to say 20 years ago yeah. he was that kind of a dude like he was still obviously oh for sure comedian, he's you know that I mean? kind of a dude yeah. there's, there's dudes out there that don't have podcasts and are doing what he's doing yeah. they just think i'm fucking caught yeah it's true um but yeah how about yo uh last thing uh and i know we gotta get going but how about all the diddy stuff dude <laughs> yeah, the diddy I'm, stuff's crazy i'm balls deep in 50, it it follows balls. 50 cent no 50 diddy cent posted today or did you send that to me somebody sent it to me that uh supposedly did he fucked uh yeah I saw that. Dad. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that yeah and and it, i love yeah. rap culture right now yeah, they're just like too. running each other over yeah, and like they should be people are just cut like i remember uh who was talking about um they went on a podcast and they were like oh they were like I, they're like i opened the door and then there's will smith getting murdered <laughs> over a couch and i'm like what yeah dude the guys yeah. dude it's getting wild now in yeah. rap rap is getting wild they're like exposing like weird gay sexual yeah. stuff that they've done delia is <laughs> probably just like Phew. <laughs> finally somebody else can i know call the someone take the heat, someone take the heat off me yeah yeah someone posted he's a doing meme his too. rounds though 
Uh, yeah, yeah. Someone posted a meme saying it was like uh, it was like Diddy like on a bike, and then Fifty Cent commented on it and said, "You know there ain't no seat on that bike." <laughs> <laughs> and then someone commented, "Oh yeah, because like, they were saying that like did somebody saw Diddy riding his bike?" Cause yeah, no yeah. one like what's also crazy is like <laughs> it just kind of went it just went into the yeah. ether. Like that, no one knows if he actually left the country. No, he's in he's in America. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like I don't think he actually left. Or somebody said that like, no his. Uh, plane with a bunch of shit on it flew out yeah so who knows yeah, what was yeah, on yeah, that yeah. plane well somebody else said like they were on their way to spring break anyways and like the timeline <laughs> would have been like they would have been going with like his daughters or whatever to spring break yeah but i don't um, think he's fleeing i just think he's stuck here now and we're gonna see what happens but um i don't but, know it's, uh, been, it's been too quiet i mean the memes and everything's going on but yeah. like nobody's there's nothing real. Yeah. But you know what, though? Nothing real yet. But you got to also remember that they they did it a little bit backwards. Cause no, I, followed, I think yeah. everything that he's being accused of is true. Probably. Like, yeah. he's just a monster, yeah. uh, like, just some weird pervert who got a lot of money. And then, like, I feel like when you can start doing stuff like that, you start getting bored and... What else can we do? Right, exactly. And that's what I was trying to explain. Like, when I forget who it Maybe it was my wife was, like, asking me, like, but I don't understand. Like, why would he start doing that and i'd be like babe i guess what it is is when you have that much money and let's say you've slept with a billion yeah, like look women at, look at vince mcmahon all that weird hell? shit that he's did crapping on people yeah. and stuff like and then what's his face did that too from uh <laughs> Hard uh, Kelly. no he peed yeah <laughs> uh, with the poo poo was uh the dude john mcafee from the fucking mcafee antivirus oh right yeah but but Okay, McAfee was kind of out of his mind, though. But like, I'm just he, saying yeah. he's shitting through a That's hammock true. on chicks. Like, yeah, yeah. I guess when you reach a level of ultimate power and you can just start paying people to do shit, you know, they just I don't get know. bored or something. But like, I guess I would seem like I would like what I don't think I. And would. then all that like yeah. Justin, B like <clears throat> what's crazy is I know a lot of it's fake. And I also know that there's a lot of it that's real and you got to kind of get through the bullshit. But like there's some weird ass clips of like Diddy with younger people. Like, yeah. like to me, I'm like, oh, well, this would explain Justin Bieber's weird, like just how he carries himself or like those old clips where like Ellen's fucking touching Bieber or like, yeah. you know, or like Diddy's got him backstage and he's just like, oh, I'm going to be alone with Justin for a while. Just us. And he's just like, ha, 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 ha. yeah, like, well, it's <laughs> yeah, I know. And he's like all uncomfortable. Where are their parents? <laughs> They're counting money somewhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? On yeah. a yacht. That's what that whole Nickelodeon thing was. Yeah. None of those parents Another gave thing, a fuck. dude, Disney and shit. Like yeah. how disgusting those people, but um it's it's pretty wild but yeah i mean i mike ortiz uh shout out to mike ortiz he told me about this he's running classes at finishers north he's running classes at finishers hq yeah. he's coaching guys like i love seeing evolution i don't even know half the time they're just hitting me up like yo where's the tape we need tape for the fighters i'm like oh shit i don't even know where it's at I'm trying to keep up but mike told me 15 10 15 years ago he told me there's a big conspiracy in rap music about like making the rappers do yeah. weird sexual yeah. stuff in front of other people so that way it's exactly like epstein and diddy yeah you got and you got uh birdman you're like blackmailing people yeah. and shit birdman and yeah. like they would say what they did to little wayne like making them like um hook up with like prostitutes in front of everybody yeah. when he was like 13 or something yeah real young and like dude like there were like he sent me all types of weird clips of guys saying like you know i had to do this for the deal it's a and, weird stuff yeah. with like the hollywood stuff that cat williams got into yeah. about like uh like getting fucking blown by uh producers or yeah. like having to wear a dress and i, I think kevin dress Hart and is, yeah. uh him like got into a fight when they're like recently in philly like their fucking entourages yeah i think like kevin hart got the shit kicked well kevin out of hart's him. probably pissed i mean cat williams yeah. i mean i mean he went on yeah. like it was that, that was, was a, a classic firing podcast. squad that was a classic podcast. i loved the rogan yeah, one I, I thought it was cool it was yeah. what was interesting was seeing somebody like stump rogan or like uh it, like ha somebody ha like Rogan was at like full attention with him yeah and it was somebody I mean obviously some of the stuff Kat said was really wild but like they were so fucking high yeah and then like I was like oh I forgot like because that 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 podcast to me was early Joe Rogan yeah. it's why I everyone loved, loved Joe yeah. Rogan yeah it was somebody like they were both fucking high just yeah, having exactly. a stone conversation it wasn't just calling it in because you had three others to do today or you yeah. had something to do after it or you're you know you're going to blow a Tesla with a fucking bow and arrow yeah. like it was a it I loved that. I, I loved every minute of it. I thought it was really fucking cool. I'm gonna go back and listen. To that yeah, again, there was I like think. there was stuff where uh, 
he was like stumped and like didn't know what to say and he was like um 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 and i'm like rogan never yeah. talks like that yeah and he, and jamie would look it up and then he'd be like yeah oh yeah cat williams <laughs> is a fucking badass and he'd just man. be like joe you think i'm lying to you yeah i think he's just barbecued yeah. <laughs> then he's like playing race simulators yeah. afterwards yeah cat williams yeah. the man yeah, there's that, still some cool shit that on shannon rogan. that shannon sharp one was Club next Shay level. Shay. That was yeah. next level. And like Shannon Sharp is like be choking on his whiskey. He's like, yeah. No, he's oh. just like, oh my God. They no. just see the numbers count up. He like he burned everybody to the ground. Yeah. I yeah. loved when he started shitting all over uh the Kangs of comedy. Yeah, fuck those yeah. guys. I don't I, don't, I didn't like, like any of them. I like Bernie Mac. That yeah, was Bernie it. Mac is the only yeah. one. The only guy that's not I never around. like Steve Harvey no. and all his stupid Although, stuff. Although I will one thing, I, will, I I thought those guys sucked. Cedric the Entertainer, he sucked. Uh, Bernie Mac. Bernie, Bernie Mac was so good. Oh my God, he was the show was good. Yeah, he'd be like, by the time he's like, I'm, I'll beat your kids. Remember that yeah, when he said yeah, about yeah, beating yeah, the kids? Yeah. My dad loved that bit too. He would always bring that up. He's like, by the time I think a kid is six, I think you can hit him in the neck. Remember he said that <laughs> shit, <laughs> dude. He was so Bernie funny. Bernie Mac yeah. was a fucking man, and that was the only guy that Cat Williams liked. Obviously, yeah, I mean, yeah, The rest yeah. of them were jerk offs. It was but, fun listening to that, but uh, and having him do Rogan afterwards. Steve Steve Harvey actually does have a, a pretty good. Um, backstory. Like, I think he had some people that really helped him. Yeah. That was like, uh, you know, some family yeah. took him in and really helped oh, him yeah, out. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then he went back and, like, gave them a whole bunch of money yep. or something yeah, like yeah. that. You know what I mean? So he's got a really good story, which is, I'm glad he helped those people out, but also stole jokes from all those He guys, was never you know my cup I mean? of tea. Nah, me neither. I liked, uh, I, I did like, uh, like Bernie Mac and then, uh, just like how I didn't like Jimmy Norton and like Opie and Anthony, like they were okay. I never really liked them. I was always in the Howard Stern, which is I was shameful always pro, pro O and A. Yeah. I, but I did like, what's his name though? Patrice. Patrice yeah. yeah. I mean, dude, he would, he would be the greatest right now. Oh yeah. Dude. If you want to go back, go be like, on. He'd be like yeah. the Tim Dillon. Yeah, uh, exactly. You know I mean? But Tim Doing Dillon, he podcast. kind of annoyed me as well though. Tim Dillon now, like he kind of pissed me off a little bit, but that's kind of what happens when you get a lot of money. But if you look up, look at, uh, if you're bored guys, go on and search Tim Dillon or uh, not Tim Dillon, uh, Patrice O'Neill conspiracies. And like, you want to talk about like like Alex Jones type shit yeah. before this is dude and when was that how many years ago XM and Sirius weren't combined he's talking about it like the shit that's going on now Patrice O'Neill is talking about yeah like I, Russia and all so types good. of stuff dude he he's, was so good he was nailing it yeah um and then yeah remember freaking or uh well, I don't know why I hit that uh Sirius and XM dude remember I remember they I had a Hyundai walk XM over. I got the um yeah they walk over to the other studio. Yeah. I got I had the big like one that came out because like when they were like Howard Stern's gonna be off. I'm like I'm not missing Stern. Yeah. I'm like I need it. I had the boom box. I just threw it out the other day. I I, I should have taken pictures of some of the stuff, but I, I you know you know when you move and you're just always moving. Every yeah. time I moved, it was never like a, like this time is like very planned and thought yeah, out. Yeah. I have stuff taken down after Friday. The studio's coming down, but like. Um, when I was doing it, I had the receiver for XM that would go, it, you would put it in your car and then the magnetic yep. XM the thing box. up top. Yep. And then I had the boom box where you'd pull it out, move it over oh, there. Oh, the magnetic yeah, thing. Yeah, because you that. would bring the antenna with you. Yeah. And I, I remember it looked like an X was the boom box and I would take it to work and I would try and get a signal and I'd be like, dude, I'm paying like 19 bucks a month for XM. And I'd be like, at some job I fucking hate and all you would hear is boo. Yeah. And then it would be like this long intro, and I'd be like, "Ah, oh, Opie and Anthony are here. Jim Norton's on. They're just gonna fuck with people all day." Yeah, uh, that kept us, bro. That yeah. kept us alive. Sanity, Doing sanity, work. dude. They're on ninety four yeah. one. I remember I get out of Martin Guitar, and Josh was like, "You got to start listening to this show afterwards." He was so far ahead of the curve with listening to talk radio. Uh, he listened to sports radio a lot, so so did I. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So like it just kind of transitioned before podcasts, and like I remember listening to a four hour. I would come home turn on my stereo and i'd sit in my room for four hours my parents didn't even know what to do yeah they're like what are you doing i'm like i'm just listening to radio yeah so we would listen to um we would listen to uh howard stern on the way down yeah like it, to train in the morning or to work yeah You'd be listen to it and then when the serious stuff started i would listen to o and a too but then we would listen to that like throughout the whole day at yeah because you could get the replays yeah then. so then they would be playing it and i'd be up at like you know i'm i'm working till five at the gns shop and it'd be like Two thirty on a Thursday or Friday, and everybody's <clears throat> everybody already left, so nothing's going on. So I'd just be like, go out.
outside, uh, smoke a bowl be- behind the dumpster, and then come in yep. and just sit in there and listen to the wrap up show or something. Yeah, it was cool because yeah. they'd, they'd, they'd be on in the morning and then they would just play the replay right after. So they'd be like on from like nine to you know two, and then from two to four or whatever, like the fuck it was. And yeah. uh, remember, it was awesome. What bro. about Bubba the Love Sponge? I never got into Bubba, but Me I neither. always uh, <laughs> they would always like cross over yeah, with the yeah. show and shit. Yeah. And then like that, he recorded Hogan. Fucking. Yeah, I know. yeah, what the hell? Did, didn't he <laughs> lost a lot of money from that, right? Yeah, he got sued. Like they, they, they apparently they were best friends. I don't Hogan know. was broke, and then he got his all his money back again. Because his, didn't his son like kill someone in a car accident or some crazy thing? Yeah, his son was uh, drunk and was street racing and lost control of like a Dodge Viper. Didn't his daughter? What happened to Brooke Hogan? Wasn't she like rapping with like Paul Wall? Yeah, stuff I like think that? I think she like saw kind of how crazy the family was and then just like went over here. I'm out. But I, rem- I the the son did kill someone. Um, he hit somebody. They were street racing, and then because he was Hulk Hogan's son, he did like the minimal amount of time you would do. I mean, anyone else would be in prison the rest yeah. of their life. I am a real yeah. man. He, there was a, there was footage recently, and this is what shows you with shit like that. Is uh, the son got arrested for a DUI, and mm. Hogan showed up and was like, "What can we do here? Oh, I saw that. What can yeah, we yeah. do here, brother? Come on, brother. You want you want an autograph? You have to leg drop. And they're like, "No, nah, it's called a body cam, and yeah. this is going to go on the internet, and there's nothing we can do. Yeah. You're fucked." Yeah. Every time they always argue about the cops thing, I'm like, "Dude, they're recording everything." Yeah, they, that was like a classic example of like that trying to like make mm. money off their kids the daughter wasn't a talented singer and didn't want to do that but yeah, they no. wanted her to do right, that exactly and yeah. then the son they were pushing as like it would be like as if your parents like if you were just like hey i want to fucking fly helicopters and your parents had a bunch of money and they're like here's a helicopter try it because <laughs> in in the show because that was like back when i kind of like, remember that yeah. vh1 was running like terrible fucking mm. television and i would watch that show because the daughter's tits would be out sometimes and um the fucking they tried making the son into a race car driver yeah. they gave him a shot and were like make it around the track and he totaled the fucking car yeah and know, then like yeah. six months later he kills someone in a fucking car accident. yeah i remember uh hulk hogan was even talking about how during that show he like wanted to break up with, like him and his wife were like not talking oh and, all yeah, of those crazy. shows yeah, like yeah. season two is like they're uh, divorced yeah remember uh, what was the other one anna nicole smith had a show didn't she have a show? She might have. Was it Anna Nicole Smith or she? She was the guy. She was the girl that had the really big boobs. She was married to the, the old guy. The guy right? was like dead. Yeah, yeah. He's like the fucking uh, dude from uh, Weekend at Bernie's. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say uh, from uh, what's uh, Breaking Bad, where he's like ding 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 oh, ding yeah, ding. Yeah. <laughs> Just some old dude in yeah. an oxygen tank. Dude, that was yeah, that was sad. That was great TV. Were, yeah. It that was, was kind of crazy. Nowadays, TV. I don't even know. Celebrity what's on TV. rehab. Yeah. VH1 was just like, let's get all these fucking people together. What and was the one where Vern Troyer was like pissing, fucking blacked out in the side of the yeah, inside there, the house? There's actually another. Um, <clears throat> there's an. I was just saw a thing on. There was like an old show. Speaking of Doctor Phil, there was like an old Doctor Phil show where he tried to set up a thing where he put in like a really overweight person with like a person who hates fat people <laughs> and then like uh that's all how like those shows are built of- the real world is like you had to pe- you would like <laughs> sit down with a psychologist and then they took yeah. people who couldn't fucking live together yeah. and put them in the same fucking room that's the exactly, old stuff yeah. was wild that irish guy was like punching people yeah they're like dominic's drunk again he's like Bleh. well the real world road rules i mean they had those some, were always yeah. a blast i like oh, i can't remember the yeah. one guy's name uh, was it CJ? Yeah. Yeah, remember He's him? still yeah. going. There's like some, uh, I just saw a commercial where it's like, they're still doing, like they're bringing back like the challenge. Wait, and, like, CJ is back? Yeah, no yeah, way. Yeah. What is that guy up to in real life? Uh, <laughs> oh. he, I, they made a lot of money off, like those guys who were like like him and The Miz before yeah, The Miz the went Miz, off yeah, to yeah. wrestling. Like those guys well, were, were winning. Was on yeah, it. they were winning all that stuff. <laughs> so was uh, fucking <laughs> Tom Segura's wife. She was on it? Yeah, she was on one of the road rules. Because like he, dude, the one I, I liked remember, Road Rules. It was a good yeah, show. I remember the one, like he was already a wild maniac and he got booted off the one show and it was like three seasons later. There's always the dude with anger yeah, issues. Yeah, they're like, doom, 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 the return of CJ. Yeah. And then he like came back and I forget where they were, but he like came back and uh, 
he ran, he just got into, he immediately showed up drunk, yeah. was wasted, yeah. took a shirt off, punched a guy, and was running, chasing people around, like yep. trying to fight. You're like, hey, then- CJ's gone. Like, <laughs> the, next, <laughs> yeah. the next thing is like, they just show like a spilt beer bottle and then like an interview with like a girl <laughs> crying. And then, then another interview with another girl crying. It was like, I'm in love with CJ. <laughs> and then like, they just, then the, the, you knew the shit at the fam when there was like a producer there yeah. with like whatever BMXers mm. hosting it. Yeah. And then they're Travis like, yeah, 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 yeah. They're Dave Mira. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, then, like, he's standing there, and they're like, "Sorry, guys. It clearly." And he's got like the headset on. Yeah, and they're yeah. like, "It clearly states that no one can touch anyone." And yeah. CJ punched nine people <laughs> in a seagull last yeah. night. So we got to wrap up. <laughs> yeah. He threw a bottle, almost killed one of the camera guys. Like yeah. he's got to go. I, you know I, I mean? forgot how good those shows were. Man. <laughs> it was they're, before fucking phones and all yeah. that bullshit. I know man. they were probably like, "Listen, CJ. Um, you know how like." You yeah. just watched three seconds of horse shit. Yeah, VH1 yeah. was a 45 yeah. minutes of I that know. with commercials. I know. And yeah. then same with uh, when it went to, um, when it changed over to, uh, what are the, all the Italian guys? The Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore, yeah. yeah. When Ronnie they still bring that back. I can't get myself out. to watch it, but like, nah, nah, nah. They, they they brought that back and like, um, they this... did like a family vacation thing. It's, it's, DJ, it's funny Pauly seeing D. the old clips. It's funny seeing the old clips. Yeah. There was a, I might have sent it to you. There's an old clip of, Snooky's cleaning the house and Mike goes walking by and you know it's out of context and like up top it says when you see one of your best friends but like Snooky's there and Mike goes walking by and she just looks up and just goes faggot <laughs> <laughs> and I was like yo this is so long yeah, ago dude. that like that aired on, on fucking yeah, MTV. That was on TV yeah <laughs> and they were crazy bro I remember the one guy Ronnie he but would just punch they'll, everybody they'll, like cut to a clip and she'll be like oh yeah Mike's gay yeah and then, like I remember like she kept was saying that and like confessionals just to like make him look bad it was like a thing on the show he's yeah, not Ron- gay though right no it was oh, just her right. like being an asshole i mean if he was whatever i mean yeah. i just thought that would be funny if he actually was yeah, so. yeah yeah she's like hey i'm sorry yeah uh, um <clears throat> ronnie ronnie was fucking crazy. oh he should just annihilate people he used to black yeah. out I, the, paulie d was on a couple of uh podcasts because i feel like he's the only one who like kept the career going as a dj and makes like massive amounts of money um and they were like asking him and he's like dude it was crazy he's like we yeah. would just go out and fuck girls and come back and like these people are fighting and he's like I was just drunk every night yeah and every he was like night. ten times older than everyone too he was older he was like than? the oldest guy on the fucking uh, oh. in the group well that's why he pro- he was he had he the was weird hair chill. blowout yeah. but he was also he was super- very just like I'm here <clears throat> yeah. I mean because he was DJing at the time or um, was like the only reason he agreed to the show was that he thought he would be able to get more people to come out to his yeah. shows yeah I mean that's why the one dude like uh, he's a jiu-jitsu guy but he did the one um, cat, my wife will watch it sometimes. It's like a <clears throat> love is blind. I yeah, think yeah. he did that just cause he figured, Hey, I mean, it's, it's exposure. Netflix is paying yeah. me. And I'm on a show. So. It's exposure. <clears throat> yeah. Um, well man, this, this has been crazy, bro. Like, uh, yeah. Thanks for always having me down here and stuff. Of course, and dude. Squad. Um, it's been, we've done a lot with it, I feel. And I think I've been able to promote a lot. I mean, it's been huge for me. Um, makes me look professional. I think a lot of people have copied our shit, which yeah, is cool. Yeah, yep. <clears throat> uh, definitely um, not doing it anymore, but yeah. they definitely copied it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, at least it was like, you know, they were always envy of us, and, you know, you having the spot and everything and being able to do this has been huge for me. So I just want to say thank you. Of and, course, uh, dude. And it's, dude, it's not, obviously it's not over. I mean, it, it. some people get upset. A lot, you know how pe- it is. <laughs> people hate change. They don't want anything to change. They want things to be like it always is. And it's just, if there's only one thing that we can rely on is that's constant and it is change. Things are going to change and you evolve and you shed your skin and you move to the next thing. And it's not that I'm doing the exactly the same thing, but you're just taking your creativity to the next thing or to yeah, the next level. It's, it's been cool <clears> to, <throat> uh, you know, when I started this, I didn't know how to create an audience. I didn't know how to do anything. And then when... um you know, when we started working together, um, that was the first time I was ever to take two things and completely cross them over where I remember you being like, yo dude, people are coming to the school cause of the show yeah. or like, Hey, people from mm-hmm. Nazareth are now coming to the podcast. And then I remember like the guys from the school started fucking with the show and like buying apparel and then like showing up the pop-ups and all that shit. It was, uh, it was so much learning and it was really cool to have two things completely just cross over and the audiences were coexisting, which is, um, 
extremely difficult to do um, and is probably one of the hardest things that you could do putting somebody else on a platform. And the fact that we were able to do it was really fucking cool. Um, you know, sitting down here and doing this and while we're talking, I'm like, oh, man, I really don't want to stop doing this. So we've talked before about figuring out how to uh, even podcast every so often. So, I mean, there'll definitely yeah. be content coming out. Yeah, and we're going to do we're There's gonna... so many shows we <clears throat> talked about with food and other things yeah. that we didn't even get to do. Yeah, I know. And uh, you know what? We still got plenty of time. So and we're going to set up a little spot over at the gym so that way we can get some interviews with people and not really like long form podcasts, but just basically cut reels, ask people questions, go on, be able to talk about stuff we could have reviewed the fights right after they yeah. happened if it was yeah. right at the gym so got a lot of ideas and um i never say it's like the end it's just no i stopped doing that everyone's always like well what's going on with the show and i'm like well i'm gonna take a break uh and and run this restaurant that i just dumped my life savings into yeah. so I'll, I'll pay attention <laughs> to that for a little bit yeah. and then if i don't lose all of my money then maybe i'll bring this thing back that doesn't make us any money yeah. <laughs> and it just like works as a promotional too. I I yeah. was all the money we ever spent on it. I just chalk up to advertising. So yeah. Um. But yeah, man, it's been awesome. And uh, Fuck you know, yeah, the man. studio is super dope. And um, it'll be cool. And it's just like all the other gyms that I've had. I can't wait to make another and, one, man. Like yeah. I said, like uh, this is my Jimmy John's. And when you see what I'm gonna do next, it's uh, it's gonna be what the fuck Bethlehem is, yeah. man. HQ a fucking fantasy factor. Yeah. And you're like, oh, we got all types of shit going here. The hey, fact oh, that I'm yeah. even talking to you about it, I'm like, <laughs> ah, we, what we might do might grow into a fucking bakery, which means that we're probably gonna be in a warehouse, which means that we're probably not gonna use all the warehouse. So like, we could probably build something else off to yeah. the Side. Yeah, and then who I knows? ain't living in this place ever again. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm and definitely then, done living like that. Yeah, and then who knows? Maybe one day you just you know be like, hey, look, I'm gonna rent an office space and just put a podcast. Yeah, in it. or that's buy what these a guys garage. Do. Yeah, exactly. You know, you never know. I mean, I didn't think it, 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 five years ago if you would have said, "Are you going to open up a place in Stroudsburg?" I would have said probably not. You know what I mean? But yeah, I, I love I love happen. the Stroudsburg part. Yeah, I, I you never know what's going to happen. I see those yeah. I see those garage doors open. I'm like, that's a fucking. As soon as you sent me the, <clears throat> like I saw that before. People, you weren't even like you were just looking at it and mm -hmm. i was like i remember like audio texting you and sending you all the shit and i'm like bro i'm like the vibes of that place with opening up the fucking garage doors yeah. i'm like people are that's like a it, fucking yeah. dope mm -hmm. vibe it's a it's so different than bethlehem and it's so but you also got to figure too is there's so many people that probably don't want to drive all the way to fucking yeah. Bethlehem from all the way up yeah. there. But then it, you said people were driving from Bethlehem up there for a smaller class. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah that that's happened. fucking that. dope. I'm like, okay. That's dope. You know what I mean, Jules is like, yeah, these guys showed up Friday. They trained at the Bethlehem school. And I'm like, really? Why'd they come up here? And he's like, well, they said they'd take the 20-minute drive because they feel like it's more like a private lesson. Yeah. It's almost like a... Not a, a bougie place because it's not Boutique. like in a nice place. It's like a little, yeah, I mean, I'm teaching, like I said, I'll go from one day teaching 30 people to go to another, another day teaching four. And it ain't no skin off my back because that's what I do, son. I'm out here teaching jujitsu. I'm hustling. I'm grinding. No cap on God. We're doing it live, <laughs> baby. You know what I mean? So I'm not stopping. Um, we're just going to, you know, uh, never, uh, you know what I mean? I never give up. I just change the hustle. So we'll see what happens next. Cheer. Um, to the next chapter. But cheers, my guy. Yeah, dog. Listening to. Thanks for uh, bringing the whiskey. Yeah, no problem, man. Uh, well, actually, I brought the ginger ale. You oh, brought yeah. the whiskey. Bringing... <laughs> I haven't had ginger ale in a while. It was in yeah. the street. There you go. So thank you again. Shout out to you. Never again studios. Never again radio. Big Uncle Zach. I don't even know what I'm promoting anymore. Let's go. Peace. I believe it. Never Again Radio. Get into it, brother.